Tech 6550, entry 6550, you are also needed. Class two goats, class two fine wolves can check in. Class two goats, class two fine wolves. Again, class two fine wolves, class two goats can check in. Class two fine wolves, class two goats.
introduce our judges this morning. On our market goat side, we have Caleb Boardman. Caleb lives in Bryan, Texas with his wife, Kylie, and three children, Cash, Tatum, and Tinsley. He is a lecturer in the Department of Animal Science and the Livestock Judging Coach and Coordinator at Texas A&M University. Caleb and his family own and operate Boardman Livestock, raising blackface show lambs. He is originally from northern Wyoming, where he grew up on a large cattle operation focused on Sim Angus genetics. Caleb attended and judged livestock at Coffeyville Community College and Texas A&M University, where he received his bachelor's in agribusiness. He then served as graduate coach at Texas A&M, including coaching the 2013 national champion team while earning a master's in ruminant nutrition. Over the past two years at A&M, the judging team has won 16 contests and had nine team members be named All-Americans. Before returning to A&M, he served as the head coach at the University of Wyoming for five years. Caleb has judged shows of all species at the county, state, and national level in 26 different states. Folks, let's give our judge a big round of applause. And on our market lamb side, we have Al Schmincke. Al has a wealth of knowledge in the livestock production as he is the third generation in hog production on their family farm. They own and operate Schmincke Genetics, selling show pigs and breeding stock throughout the United States. Their herd has had numerous national champions. They maintain 30 elite Chester Whites and Crosses, specializing in show pigs and breeding stock. He also runs a successful U operation consisting of 230 head of elite Hampshire Cross Club lamb producing ewes, which these two operations have accomplished many honors on all levels of competition nationwide. Al and Candy are proud to have the fourth generation, Cody and Chelsea, actively involved in the operation along with their spouses, Taylor and Paul, as they enjoy watching the fifth generation, Everly Wade and Savannah and Bo join in on the daily activities. He is the national show feed specialist for ADM. And along with the livestock or operation, they are involved in 500 acres of crop production consisting of corn, soybeans, and alfalfa. He has been judging for 40 years as a well-known livestock judge that has a common sense approach to livestock evaluation and judged at many national and state fairs. Folks, let's give our lamb judge a big round of applause. Still missing three fine wolves and two goats to check in for class two.
need entry number 6105 and entry 2307 to check in on the fine wool side. Folks, let's give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. to recognize the Texas Lamb Breeders Association for supporting Rodeo Austin. TLBA, along with the support of Rodeo Austin, will add a total of $28,500 in additional premiums in the market lamb show today. We are pleased to announce that the two highest placing Texas bred lambs that do not qualify for the youth auction will each receive $750 from the TLBA. To qualify for the special premium, these lambs must have, ha must have the TLBA breeder tag in their ear and have been properly validated with such tag at the time of validation last fall. This will be awarded in each of the 19 classes during the day. Those recipients will be announced during the show today. TLBA is pleased to be able to show our support of youth who chose to purchase lambs bred by members of the Texas Lamb Breeder Association and thank both breeders and exhibitors for their continued efforts during the course of all Texas major shows. Entry 6105 from Wise County, you are needed to check in on the lamb side. On the GOAT side, the first and second places, all first and second places on the GOAT side will need a parent to come after the class because there will be D DNA testing for those. Entry 8143, Williamson County. We need you to check in on the GOAT side.
the two pickups that are blocking that gate are still sitting there. The tow truck is on its way. If you've got one of those two trucks, you might want to move it. Well, good morning, Austin. Uh, it is certainly a pleasure to be here and really excited for the day and to be able to work through here and uh, start with a really good set of goats here in class one. Uh, as we'd probably often expect, some different shapes and sizes in class one. And so, you know, as we work through the day, we're going to try to get consistent in what we're trying to find. But I, I will say this first three, I, I think it's an interesting way to start out because they're not built the same, but I think these are the three most unique ones. And, and that's what I'm going to try to find through the day. Uh, we have absolutely the stoutest goat in class in one. We have absolutely the best built goat in two. And we have absolutely the best handling, kind of neatest one in terms of being tucked up in three. And so to me, those are the three most unique goats out here as far as hard to make pieces out here. And that's where we put them together. Uh, in class one, uh, this guy up front is just an absolute horse in terms of power. I, I mean, do we need to make him any stouter than this one? Probably not because it's already drawn a little bit in terms of making him a bit coarse in his shoulder and his neck right there. But if we talk about a st stout skull, a big chest, a round body, a big back and hip, and then most importantly, one that can still operate right. I think his scapula still lays on him right and his knees still square into him. His front feet are still pointing the right direction. I think all those things are correct in that particular goat and he can still handle himself in an okay fashion out on the go. We could tighten his hide up in him just a little bit. Again, we could just smooth his shoulder up and clean him up at the base of his neck right there. Uh, but there is a tremendous amount of goat there and still a balanced uh, and good moving package. Uh, this one can Kept working up right there and uh, probably got just a nickel of a bad read on him right away, right from behind. I don't want to continue on just starting on negatives on these goats, but right from behind is where he needs to be changed. He needs to be bigger pinned and just more stifle in that particular goat. When that young lady gets one driven, that's how they should be painted up from the side as we talk about his chest and his shoulders tucked up in him. Just love his athletic body shape, and that guy's so good on his feet and legs. I particularly like the fact he's a little stouter in his feature and just a little better in his pasture. And then the goat here in third, his knee sits back in him, especially as these two young people get in and drive in him. His knee stays a little more secure in him. He gets out touched and out handled and just outmassed by the goats on either side of him. But that is a good looking goat right there. That's so youthful and correct in his skeleton. That's going to be high on the priority list as we go through the day. This thing right here is beautiful skin. And I mean, we talk about a fresh, upstanding rack shape and good loin shape and just his velvet touch is just something that's so good to handle. That is a thin-necked goat that's jammed up in his chest and good in his underline right there. You know, as we get in him and the young man gets maybe just a little higher every now and then, I'd sure like to set his knee back in him just a little bit. I'd like to stouten him up in terms of his rear bone and strengthen that rear pasture in him just a little bit. But uh, that's a good-looking goat that caught my attention right away, and he is tremendous to the touch. A little lighter 
Tiger White goat here in our blonde headed kind of paint, but uh, and the good fundamental square goat right here. I like his squareness on his feet and legs. He's good in his body shape. He gets just a little weaker right in behind his blade there and doesn't handle just as big and powerful over his rack. I just didn't think that guy had maybe his unique class leading advantages in a certain any one certain area like the three right in front of you did, young man. I think a good fundamental stout goat. Uh, five, six, seven are all very, very powerful. I mean, they've got a tremendous amount of muscle and great carcass goats here. And I think five specifically, I mean, you talk about a big top, thick ended goat. He is all those things. We can see he's a little rounder in his shoulder. He's a little frailer in his bone work and a little steeper out of his hip. That just doesn't allow him to balance quite as well. I thought from this goat's hip forward, young lady, that one can play all day. I mean, that one is good in terms of his chest and his rib cage. He's tall fronted and good looking, and he has plenty of power. It's that rear third of his skeleton. He just drops into his tail, has too much set to his pasture, and gets down on those back wheels and a little out at his hawk as we watch him go. I thought it was close there, and I know this is our decision on the sales slot all day. That's a tremendously big muscled goat, young lady, just a little too steep hipped and just a little off balance. A couple other really nice goats that probably just ran out of power or handle quality there. The young people did a nice job on. Please give them all a nice round of applause. Excellent way to start our market goat show. Hello and good morning here to, again uh, 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 here at Rodeo Austin and getting a great start here right out of the gate this morning uh, and again uh, in our fine wolves out here got an incredible set of uh, market lambs and I think and again I think there's uh, I, I think there's four or five of these I think they just kind of work towards the top I guess from the standpoint of just natural freshness and shape when we get right up over the top of them and I think as you start studying them right up over the rib and the way they open up through the center part of the rib cage and, and manage there's some fore rib and some depth, some flank back in and try to keep some, some balance and some symmetry together as we put them kind of out in motion. The one I'm going to lead off with here, I think kind of ties that and totals it up the best for me. I think uh, when you get your hands on him, he's ultra lean and shapey. I think as you watch him out here in motion, uh, he balances up extremely well. I really like the top pair when they come at me, uh, when we come walking around and making the three-quarter view coming at you. They are really cracked open through the front part of their cavity. They maintain that width all the way through with a big old upper pin set uh, and maintain a tremendous amount of muscle and shape. Good on flexibility of their skeleton. The class winner for me, I guess, just balances just a nickel better right down this top. He ties into his hip and his rack, uh, or his hip and his loin just a nickel better as we get out through there. I do like maybe some of the outer turn and some of the extra rounder shape that I see uh, from the standpoint of a little more of a three-dimensional look there in our second place weather. But I think for me, again, that's ultra cracked open. He's ultra lean, still very shapey up on the top side of his body. I think there's some give and take. I think probably for me, the class winner is probably just a nickel more ready on the top side of his body. I think the guy there in seconds probably getting just a nickel long in his tooth as I read him right down the top side of him, but I think that's a really good one. I think follow close, and I think the third place one for me falls in there very logically as we watch him out here. Again, that balances up. He's got a really good rib cage working into him. He's still lean enough with extra good shape and upper hip and rump. Got very good lower stifle working into this particular guy. You may balance him a little bit down his top line just a nickel, but I think one there that, again, I think ties a lot of good things together. He fits very well for me in the third spot. Fourth, I think you come in here, and again, one that's got just a total amount of power and shape working into him. 
He gets probably just a little out hustled there. I'd like to make him just a little bit cleaner in his build uh, as we watch him out through there. He's got a ton more product in him. That's what gets him into the four spot. I will tend to lean to a little more product like he's got. He's got just a little more on him. The advantage of my one that's in the fifth spot uh, is he is leaner. Uh, he handles just a nickel more shape. Uh, he gets a little flatter in his cage, a little narrower in the base when we watch him out here in motion. And so those are my thoughts. That's kind of why I see little differences in him. But I think a very excellent class as we work our way through. Let's give all these young people here a real nice round of applause. Congratulations. Class three goats, Ken check in. Class three. Class three fine wolves can begin checking in as well. Results from class one market goats. Tenth place, Claire Graves, Munster FFA. Ninth, Kaylee Phelps, Wilson County 4-H, Breeder is TNT Showstock. Eighth, Stella Sprayberry, Jones County 4-H. Seventh, Amy Moore, Tom Green County 4-H. Breeder is Shrank Show Goats. Sixth, Lawana Hilton, Florence FFA. Breeder is Ebling Show Goats. Fifth, Kayla Simpton, Medina Valley FFA. Breeder is Shrank Show Goats. Fourth, Roston Bowles, Wilson County 4-H. Breeder is T-Bar S Livestock. Third, Blake Biaselli, Brownwood FFA. Breeder is Shrank Show Goats. Second was Katie Jewett, B Hubbard FFA. And our class winner was Laney McCall, Archer County 4-H. Breeder is Shrank Show Goats. Congratulations. Once again, class three goats, class three fine wolves should check in.
results from class one fine wolves. Tenth place, Maya Jones, Wimberley FFA. Breeder is Justin and Bridget Jonas. Ninth, Katie Collins, Idaloo FFA. Breeder is Smithwick Club Lambs. Eighth, Cade Banowski, Menard County 4-H. Breeder is Banowski Club Lambs. Seventh, Nolan Schiller, Williamson County 4-H. Breeder is Smithwick Club Lambs. Sixth, Emory Ruth Hale, Uvalde County 4-H. Breeder is Skelton Club Lambs. Fifth, Peyton Hart, Mule Shoe FFA. Breeder is Mad Dog Club Lambs. Fourth, Wyatt Renfro, Brewster Jeff Davis County 4-H. Breeder is Stolt Sheep Company. Third, Coulter Fair, Brazos County 4-H. Breeder is Struby Livestock. Second, Jet Hart, Armstrong County 4-H. Breeder is Struby Livestock. And our class winner was Landry Meyer, Blanco FFA. Breeder is Hal Eckhart of Spring Branch. Congratulations. Give these goat exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. So fifth and sixth out of that first class of fine wolves will receive the 750 each from TLBA. That will be mailed to them. Got quite a few class three fine wolves that still need to check in. If you have a class three fine wolf, please come check in. The 
six more goats for class three as well. If you have a class three goat, please come check in. Thank you, Lamb Exhibitors. Fine wall entry number 7035 needs to check in, 7035. Entry number 791 and entry number 3619. Need you to check in on the goat side.
Another really nice set here in class two on the GOAT side. And uh, uh, just from a quality and balance standpoint, putting some uh, unique things together. This young lady's up front, uh, I thought let off uh, uh, when we came in. It took me a little longer to start pulling a few in this particular set. Uh, uh, but these two were two I pulled quickly. And, and this guy, uh, just uh, especially from his midrib back, I think just his construction to his hip and his hind leg, his squareness of base, his foot size, uh, and still just his comfort. And then when she gets him stuck and drove here, his balance from the side, uh, I think, is easily the best. Uh, awesome scold goat that's opened up in his chest and still cleaning his breastplate. Uh, you know, he's maybe just a nickel forward at the top side of his blade, and that makes him ease up just a little behind it out there in motion. He's not just the most out there in terms of stifle shape from behind, but just such a good balanced goat that's very, very fresh and good to the touch and just high quality all the way through. Congratulations to that young lady on on winning. I thought it was a nickel closer here, probably between two and three. Uh, but as we watch, and especially as I get my hands on them, uh, this goat in two is just an absolute Mack truck in terms of muscle and carcass value. And really, he's the class leader as far as just true skeletal width incredible body shape in that particular goat. I mean, the rib cage laid in this guy is tremendous, and it's fueled so much power up high. Big loin goat that's very, very expressive and powerful from behind. He's just a little smaller footed. Biggest thing, he gets just a little shorter in terms of his neck, and then when we set him out in motion, to me, he's just a little straight and tight out of his shoulder and his knee compared to the goat we lead off with, even though he wants to be not hook up straight or perfect behind it. I think the use of his knee and his front skeleton and works in him just a little better. Uh, but specifically, that goat is, is quite a bit more powerful than our goat here in three. I do love the look of this goat here from the side. He's taller fronted. I think he's good in his lines. He's big footed and everything balances well. Uh, he gets outhandled quite a bit, young lady. His loin edge is just not near as big as the pair right in front of you, and really probably the couple right behind you as well, but you get up here from such a good balance standpoint. As I set him in motion, if we're going to give up a little bit of muscle and handle quality through the day, we're going to really need to be spot on in terms of build, and he's got just a little flaw where he pressures his outside hoof going right away from us. He'll roll that hawk out to his outer framework just a little more, and so to be the kind of good-looking goat that doesn't have quite as much punch and power to to him, he still has a little structural flaw right there in terms of just dropping a click straight in his hawk and pushing that out just a little bit. But uh, love his balance from the side when she gets him stuck. Four and five right here, great carcass goats. They touch good. Young lady's blonder headed goat right here. He's just a little hollow flanked, young lady. I can't get him to balance quite as good. And partially, he's long body and he's good in his rib cage. And I know those type of animals are harder to get their flank line right but it just throws his balance off a little bit right here from the side. Other than that, I like that goat a lot. Uh, really kind of opposite as far as boxiness goes. Quite a bit kind of shorter bodied goat here that then his flank line sits in better, probably to the extreme. Maybe a little extremely long bodied on fo five and or four and maybe just a little too short bodied and compact. Here on five, young lady. He's opened up. He's powerful. He's thick. He just doesn't balance quite as well as the ones up ahead of us again. He's just a little more compact, a little off in his top line and frailer. But awesome touch, and you did a great job presenting that go. Big, big shape up high, expressive, great, great carcass goat. Big footed, wide kind of made goat here that I, I like in terms of that when he first came in. We get him stuck. He's got a little extra shoulder. He's opened up at the top side of his blade and just doesn't balance quite as well from the side or have the same shape from behind. We talked to these exhibitors. I pulled them in, but seven and eight were good carcass goats. Again, didn't just blend together and balance quite as well. A nice class two, couple of real good ones up at the top end. Let's please put our hands together and congratulate all these exhibitors. Folks, if you have a white pickup, you may want to listen to this. They are about to be towed. A white Ford license SZK. 0702. Another white Ford, license TTJ1764. And a white GMC, license MMK6562. You are parked where you cannot be and you will be towed. All three of those vehicles are on the far side, close to the Howdy building, but on the other end. If you're parked over there, you may want to go check because you will be towed.
our uh, first and second place goats. We need a parent for those two exhibitors to come to the arena. Results from Class 2 Goats, 10th place, Ryler Jeffcoat, Splendora FFA, 9th, Carly Waters, Leon County 4-H, 8th, Kinsley Westbrook, Wattsboro FFA, 7th, Morgan Hernandez, Hayes County 4-H, breeder is Evans Livestock, 6th, Mackenzie Kruger, Williamson County 4-H, 5th, Emma McClendon, Washington County 4-H. Fourth, Rayleigh Holscher, Bell County 4-H. Breeder is Hutto Livestock. Third, Ellie Ann Byrne, Swisher County 4-H. Second, Danica Walker, Catula FFA. Breeder is Hoffman Livestock. And our class winner was Hazen Hoffman, Glasscock County 4-H. Breeder is Hoffman Livestock. Congratulations. Class four goats should check in. Class four goats. Once again, license plate MMK6562, 
white GMC, license plate TTJ1764, white Ford, and license plate SZK0702, white Ford. You need to move your vehicles immediately or they will be towed. Really like this group here at our second class of fine wolves. Again, I think uh, there's lots of good things you can talk about. All top five of these, and there's some of that uh, as we work down through the class. Uh, kids have done a real good job of managing them. I think maybe we kind of we kind of continue to kind of keep a, uh, an eye on cover and watch them things that we kind of get to manage them up over the rib cage and stuff. And so those are probably some of the little things that we've kind of look and study on and then of course just kind of watching this particular group come out here there's probably just a little more combination in here and again trying to get them to kind of total up in my mind as i kind of study them uh, from the standpoint of their build and i think from the standpoint of muscle shape uh, and as we kind of look at from the standpoint of of how that skeleton is kind of put together i really like the skeleton of this uh, particular final we're leading off with uh, you watch this guy out through here He's second to none when you start studying him out through the front part of his cavity, and, and he kind of comes to and maintains that extra turn through his rib cage. <clears throat> He's got a really good, nice rack shape and an extra good loin uh, from a standpoint of width and edge and maintains it out through his hip and rump, uh, and one that sets down an extremely stout kind of a foot and feature, and, and it's still good, very good in parallel on these lines. We get right through his forearm, right there, out through his flank. I'd probably like to freshen him maybe just a nickel. I think that's where my second place one's got him and maybe just a little more lower stifle. And so that was kind of the weight as I kind of looked at those between the two of them. And I guess that's the subtle differences that I saw. I like the extra stouter feature, the little stouter skeleton. And I like him in motion just a nickel better as I watch him compared to our second place one. Second place one, again, I think has got a ton of power, uh, more than enough shape, really still ultra clean when we get up over his rib cage, not quite as stout when we get right out through his forearm, but he is ultra fresh. I think he settles in here just right for Rodeo Austin, I think from a standpoint of freshness up on the top side of his body. We get him in motion, he wants to tip maybe just a little bit more, wants to come apart maybe just a little bit more right behind his blade. But I think those two, I think, surface for me really nice. Ultra power, one lays in three. And, uh, and I like him probably the second best when he comes rolling right at me out to the front part of his body. That one's cracked open, he, and he maintains that base width through the center of his cavity and right out through his hip and his rump, a lower muscular shape. Like I told him, I told the young man, I'd like to just make him a little better looking when we get him in motion. His skeleton kind of wants to come unassembled just a little bit, maybe give him just a nickel more flux when we get right out through the hock. But I think one there, it's got cutability, still got tremendous amount of shape, tremendous amount of product. Like that real well about him. Same comes with our fourth. I think another one there's got tremendous amount of shape and muscle. Again, probably doesn't stay together quite as good in motion. Shows for me just a little more stuff kind of going on in the front part. I know she looks like she's had kind of an accident with him at one time or another, but I think still his skeleton, he's got just a little more breastplate, not quite as long front and long neck as some of the other ones we've got out here. Like to give him just a nickel better looking, but a lot of power. She's done a very good job of keeping muscle shape and still keeping him lean enough. One of the better look ones that I've got right out here in fifth again where that I really like the design this one is really up fronted up design really well probably wants to bow just a little more from behind and I'd like to give him just a shot more muscle compared to the ones that I've got right directly above him uh, but I think one that's really good looking good built uh, I just like to make him just a little more secure off that back leg but I think really good let's give all these kids again a real nice round of applause congratulations These ex go to exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring.
our first and second place fine wolves will need to come check in shortly for our fine wool drives. And then our first class of fine wool crosses will check in. Class two final results. Tenth place, Zachary Sierra, Canyon New Braunfels FFA, Breeder of Smithwick. Ninth, Madison Contreras, Fredericksburg FFA, Breeder is Holster Showstock. Eighth, Sydney Jones, Fredericksburg FFA, Breeder is Lazy K. Seventh, Zane Burnside, Jordanton FFA. Breeder is Horwood Show Lambs. Sixth, Ramsey McFall, Reagan County 4-H. Breeder is Stolt Sheep Company. Fifth, Stratley Struby, Tom Green County 4-H. Breeder is Struby Livestock. Fourth, 
Steely Thomas, Wall FFA. Breeder is Long Club Lambs. Third, Curry Smithwick, Runnels County 4-H. Breeder was Smithwick. Second place went to Royce Cook, Runnels County 4-H. Breeder was Smithwick. And our class winner was Jalen Miller, Dowhart FFA. Breeder is Long Club Lambs. Congratulations. The fifth and sixth place, Stratley Struby and Ramsey McFall will receive the uh, checks from TLBA in the mail. Once again, class four should be checking in. So class four. Your first and second place fine wools once again should check in and then the class four fine wool crosses. Entry 5754 on the GOAT side needs a check-in.
Thank you, Lamb Exhibitors. Need a representative from Harris County Klein FFA to the load area, loadout area. Missing a disposition card. A little deeper class again here on class three versus class two. And I think an interesting decision up here in our top five. Uh, it, this black headed goat uh, comes in and he hits me hard with some of the extras, uh, just looking like a show goat in terms of his build and his chest and front end and his top line. You know, he is not just the stoutest right from behind in terms of his pin set or stifle. Uh, I think that one's so good in his balance and his structure. I love that one out in motion. He reads just a little more youthful and tucked up to me than the weather here in second. I like the way he keeps his top line and just utilizes his skeleton just a little better uh, than the goat that's going to stand here in third. And, uh, you know, he was fighting and not wanting to be a show goat on the brace there for just a little bit. And, uh, uh, you know, he gave us a good look right there at the very end as I placed those and just kind of came together probably the best for us finally right there at the very end to kind of show off that balance and hit me hard like he did when he first came in the gate. And I think that's just an awfully high quality show goat right there with plenty of carcass value. You know, I'm not going to say I completely missed this goat right here, but I didn't pull him off the walk, and then we we're so far down the line that he ends up clear down the line and keeps working up, and so I guess I'll admit and not be afraid to say I maybe did miss him just a little because that's a that's a very good goat that I, I should have found off the walk there. I mean, that guy's opened up and squared to his corners. He's round-bodied and big-backed. Uh, you know, he's just a click thicker in his neck and maybe just, uh, just okay in terms of his proportions from the side as far as youthfulness and being tucked up, but you step back off and everything balances well on him. I like his skeleton. He could be stouter in terms, terms of his true foot size. Uh, that's a great balanced, good carcass goat uh, that I just kept finding a lot of value in as we worked him on the way up in the class. To me, he just wasn't quite as unique in terms of his build and his balance and didn't just give me kind of that first initial hard impression like our black-headed goat that won. A young man does a great job driving him, never gave up and got him worked all the way up. But this one right here, I think uh, I did pull him and he hits me hard as far as his skull and his chest within his forearm right away uh, and so we pulled him right off the walk but he gets better when we stand him still uh, because this young lady gets him put together and that thing uh, I think does balance extremely well and, and from behind he's so good in terms of being opened up in his chest and still very good in his body shape you know 
he wants to give uh, just, get just a little easy in his spine to me. And when we wa watch him walk, he'll almost kind of reach those front feet out and just kind of stretch out a little bit and break right in his top line. He doesn't stay just quite as collected there as what we'd like to see compared to our top two. But that young lady does a nice job putting him together. Awesome touch and go here in four. I love his shape and his expression. I wish we could blend his shoulder onto his body wall just a little bit better, young lady. And then he's just so big muscle, then he's got such a big jump muscle right there. His top line just won't come together quite as smooth for us as we hook him up out of the heel of his loin into that jump muscle right there. That pops up and causes his balance to be just a click off right there. I love this goat uh, here in five in motion, young man. He was a quick pull for me because that is one of the best structured goats out here. Love him out and his best view is when we get him out in motion. I think the angle of his shoulder and set to his knee, his length, the hip and posture to his hind leg is also appropriate. I think that goat's very correct in his underlying balance. He will ease up just a little bit when we get him on the brace and he doesn't want to just push in and drive and we can see he dips just a little right out of the backside of his blade right there biggest thing, young man, is when I get my hands on that one, he is just not as big and firm and square in his rack or his loin shape. There's just not near as much carcass goat and just handle quality in him. But man, that one just uh, really uh, gets me going as far as how sound structured and good built he is. And that's why he was such a quick pull. Young man that rounds out our sales slots here is good in his chest. I think when the young man gets him propped and stopped, that one's good. He touches good. He's tall fronted. Uh, and so he was quick to pull off the handle. We didn't pull him off the walk, and that's where you get six young man. It's specifically how he gets a little steeper out of his hip and the use of his hind leg and just doesn't stay as good balanced as we watch that guy take the lap around, and that's where we pull in here to six. Again, we talk these exhibitors as we go down. Wish this goat was just a little fresher handling, bigger legged. A couple of them we could just make just blend a little smoother from the side. A very, very good class again. Let's give him a nice round of applause. Again, we need our first and second place fine wolves to check in. Results from class three goats. Tenth place, Shelby Walker, Nueces County 4-H. Breeder of Shrank Show Goats. Ninth, Dylan Briscoe, Longview FFA. Eighth. Madison Condra, Lubbock Cooper FFA. Seventh, Briley Raider, Gillespie County 4-H. Sixth, Mason Smoot, Kendall County 4-H, Breeder is Hoffman Livestock. Fifth, Caden Fought, Poth FFA, Breeder is Decker Showgoats. Fourth, Sydney Curry, Kendall County 4-H. Third, McKenna Cowley, Randall County 4-H, Breeder is Stork Livestock. Second, Kellen Ar Ardall, Hako FFA. And our class winner was Carter Sherwitz, Fisher County 4-H. Congratulations. Class five goats can check in, class five. Again, if you have a first or second place fine wool, we need you to the holding area for the fine wool drive.
Do we need a parent for Carter Sherwitz or, a, or advisor to the show ring? Let's give all these young people here at our Fine Wolves a real nice round of applause. Uh, this, this group here, uh, excellent group all the way through for a set of heavies out here. Uh, kids have done a nice job of managing fat cover, and we've got a tremendous amount of shape, muscle, uh, structural build working through this particular group. I think ties together, I think, really nice. And, and quite honestly, I think you could kind of make a case for the top three or four uh, in different spots and different directions, however you kind of want to lean towards maybe your tendencies. Um, I like the class. That one, that one hit me hard when he came in, and, and again, I'm trying to. These top pair actually hit me hard coming in, and I think they're the as three dimensional and shapey as we get up there on the top side of their bodies. They got monster kind of hips and rumps. They're very level. They're very good in their structural build, and the class winner for me just opens up with just a little more upper pin set. Uh, he's got a monster rack, a big kind of a loin kind of working into him. He's still clean enough on the top side. Uh, sets down on really good skeletons to get out here. Uh, maybe fights are a little bit in motion, so we don't maybe give quite as, as good a look uh, all the time when we get out in motion. That, again, uh, give it just a little more time. Hopefully, we get that one to kind of continue to do that. Uh, it's always important as we watch them in motion, uh, for me especially, as we get them out there to try to keep that extra balance and silhouette that we're kind of looking for. 
Um, I like the second waist one a bunch, and I, and I kept weighing in on him. I, when the young man gets him set, he's about as elevated. He stays together. Uh, he stays assembled so well in motion. He doesn't give up too much in muscle compared to our class winner. I do think he's maybe just a nickel leaner, but I don't think he's as, quite as stout featured. And I don't think he's quite as wide up in the upper pin set as we get out there. And I think he really shows that when we put him in motion. He doesn't show maybe the extra muscle development and shape like our class winners got when we get him in, out there together in motion. The one that I've got, uh, this third place one for me, and he, guys, he throws a little bit of a kink in it because I like him a bunch also. I think that one's stout, heavy bone. He still runs uphill, I think, really well. I don't see him quite as shapey on the t right in his loin compared to the top pair of him, and that's where it basically kind of changed it up maybe for me is where we kind of slipped him into the third spot. But I think another one that I think falls right with them, uh, to me, I think they just kind of logically go together with the reasoning I've got kind of sitting with those. Our fourth place one, another one that's up front, a good looking, gets shot, just, just being short on muscle shape compared to these top three that we've got out here. He gets maybe just a nickel straight in his hock out there, maybe not quite as big in his pin set, but I think another one that has still got the same kind of look skeleton-wise as we got out here to those top three. And our fourth place one, again, another one here, or fifth place one, that really does, you can't poke a lot of holes in. He does get a little rounder out of his shoulder and out through his hip. Uh, you see when we get him out there in motion, but stout, lean, muscular, and I think he needs to make the top five. So let's give all these young people, again, a real nice round of applause. Congratulations. Give these goat exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. Okay, we are ready for our Okay, we are ready for our fine wheel drive. Coming out of class one, first place went to Landry Meyer, Blanco FFA. And second place went to Jet Ar Hart, Armstrong County 4-H. From class two, first place was Jalen Miller, Dowhart FFA. And second place was Royce Cook, Runnels County 4-H. And from class three, first place was Alex Etheridge, Highland FFA. And second was Wesley Stevens, El Dorado FFA. Folks, let's give these lamb exhibitors a big round of applause. Still missing a few class four fine wool crosses. If you have a class four fine wool cross, please check in.
still missing four fine wool crosses for class four. Need to check in. Entry number 7877 and 3401 need you to check in. Still missing four goats from class five. Please come check in. Class five goats. Missing four of you. Results from class three fine wolves. 10th place, Olivia Bean, Runnels County 4-H, breeder of Stokes Livestock. Ninth, Kobe Stevens, El Dorado FFA, breeder of Stevens Fine Wolves. Eighth, Riley Wonderlick, Comal County 4-H, breeder is 5-5 Riverbend Ranch. S seventh, Adriana, uh, Audrey Pogue, Burnett County 4-H, breeder is Newsom Livestock. Sixth, Rhett Dixon, Sterling County 4-H, breeder is Justin and Bridget Jonas. Fifth, Brody Raider, Gillespie County 4-H, breeder is Hal Eckhart. Fourth, Emerson Blanick, Tom Green County 4-H, breeder is Struby Livestock. Third, Jacqueline Ray, Fredericksburg FFA, breeder is Lazy K Livestock. Second, Wesley Stevens, El Dorado FFA, breeder is Stevens Fine Wolves. And our class winner was Alex Etheridge Highland FFA, breeder is Elledge Livestock. Congratulations. Let's give our kids out here in our fine walls uh, a real nice round of applause. I think we've got an excellent set out here. And again, uh, I think incredible from the standpoint of shape, muscle, feet, and legs. A uh, little subtle differences. I think every class kind of bring maybe just a little bit of subtle differences. Uh, I think as you've got to work your way through them from the lightweight, uh, I think that are uh, really good designed. I think that are really good built. Uh, still on the way on up from the weight standpoint. Uh, still maintain enough leanness and muscular shape to them. Maybe not quite the total muscle volume that some of these that we've got right above them, but I think design and mold I think is really well. Our middleweights, again, a tremendous amount of product, tremendous amount of shape in both of those that we've got there. Uh, I, again, I think you get your hands right up on the rib cage. Uh, both are extremely lean with a lot of product working into them. Uh, they meet your hand with a tremendous amount of top shape uh, and natural leanness and still being ultra fresh to get up on top of them. And our heavyweights here that are very similar. I think, again, I think from a standpoint of muscle product, really crack open good through the center part of their cavity. Uh, they're still up there in the weights that, are, that uh, we still like extremely well. Uh, probably pushing maybe just a little more condition on them as we kind of compare them to our rest of our group. And I do think uh, the pair that I'm going to end up using in here for champion are probably not necessarily lookalikes, but I think they handle, I think, very similar. I think they put together a combination of muscle volume, uh, some stoutness of feature, uh, still still lean enough when we get right over the rib cage and got great big racks, great big loins working into them. I like these two really, really well. I thought really close. Our middleweights will be our champion reserve. Congratulations.
our champion final goes to Jalen Miller, Dowhart FFA, and reserve goes to Royce Cook, Reynolds County 4-H. Congratulations. We are still missing four final crosses. They're about to go in. 7-3-9-6, 7 8 7 7 Three four zero one and three four zero three. Your class is about to walk in. On the on the goat side, missing seven one one four and five five four three. Still missing 7114 for class 5. Goats, please come check in. Entry 7396, your group is going in the ring on the final crosses. Really high quality set here on the class four. Uh, and again, probably just a couple different types and kinds we work up here. Uh, but just to be frank, uh, every goat two on down and just kind of fits inside of this white headed goat. I mean, uh, he is by about a six point cut, the widest boldest bodied, biggest backed, thickest ended one in here. Uh, that still balances great from this side. Could he move just a little better out of his front end when we set him out in motion? I think he's out on the edge. I'd certainly like to just see him utilize his shoulder and his knee just a little better. We tighten him up right there in his wrinkles at the base of his neck and clean that up just a little bit. But again, I think just as far as true body shape and power and stoutness and carcass merit, uh, that goat uh, just is kind of a standalone in this particular class as far as being extra stout, extra thick, and still good balance from the side. Uh, this one probably is my favorite from the side, though. I mean, you talk about a tall, fronted, neat-looking goat here that's hard shape. Love how he's tucked up in his shoulder. His hide's just a little tighter there, and that thing is really good. I still like his skull shape. He's stout in those regards. Uh, when I get right up on top of him, young lady, that guy just needs to be opened up in his forerib just a little bit more. If he was rounder and just truer in his forerib shape, I think that one can make a run at our class winner right there. I just like to change him in that regard, but he is tall fronted, hard touching, good looking. Uh, and then relative to three, that holds some of the similar traits as far as kind of being extra tucked up and neat. I read this one quite a bit better structurally as we set him out in motion because this one right here is awesome from the side as well. Uh, I, I guess uh, uh, almost a little sheepy looking in some ways as far as how he's so tucked up in his shoulder and deep in his flank line tall fronted, I mean, good in his lines, big featured, 
that guy's a little straight up through his shoulder and his knee. And as we watch him get out and go, I just wish we could set him back in those regards. We can see his knee right here, just wanting to be a little forward. He's not in his stout in his jawline and just uh, uh, is good there. And his skull probably is the one right up in front of him as well. Uh, that's an awfully nice weather to be standing in three. Another one probably we could say some of the same things about here in four as far as just awesome looking, kind of matching two, three, and four here from the side. Uh, this is one high quality show goat from the side. He touches very fresh and wedges right from his rack back into his loin. Uh, I think maybe the best structured goat out here of all four of them. Uh, I love the angle to his shoulder and set to his knee. That guy's awesome in his hip and his hind leg. And so, you know, my debate was, is there enough goat there? Uh, and, and just starting with his skull, uh, that guy's easily the frailest about his head and his jaw. He's the frailest about his forearm and his front foot. And, and he's just the, the narrowest of our first four there. And so you got to just ask yourself, is there enough goat? Uh, more goats, in my opinion, probably need to be built like this guy as far as feet and legs and structural correctness. If we give him just a stouter noggin, just a bigger four rib and just wider skeleton just to click all the way through, man, we could run with that guy because he's built right. Uh, and I really appreciate that about him. Black-headed goat, again, one that's pretty good from the side. He touches big up high and is good in his forehead. We can see, again, he wants to get a little extreme in his jump muscle and not hook quite as right up into the heel of his loin there. Biggest thing on this guy, young man, when we watch him go, he'll just close up a little too much from behind, just going right away from us and to his base. If we could keep him pushed out and square to his framework and corners as we watch him track away, I think that goat could certainly rise a spot or two right there. Boxy made, stout, thick, big bone goat right here, young lady. He's a little mature and not as attractive in his skull right there. He gets just a little compact and a little plainer from the side as far as length versus depth goes to me. He's not quite as neat as the ones up in front of us, but very, very high quality class again. Let's please give him a big round of applause. Class four goat results, 10th place, Tate Widenfeller, Kendall County 4-H. Breeder is Highview Ranch. Ninth, Addison Coleman, McLennan County 4-H. Eighth, Kellen Embry, Dripping Springs FFA. Breeder is Richardson Livestock. Seventh, Kylie Ruiz, Live Oak County 4-H. Breeder is Shrank Show Goats. Sixth, Ella Sufall. Freestone County 4-H. Fifth, Harris Hindler, Grimes County 4-H. Fourth, Brett Bowers, Fredericksburg FFA. Breeder is Hoffman Livestock. Third, Sydney Newsom, Edwards County 4-H. Breeder is Allen Ranch. Second, Ava Allensworth, Brazos County 4-H. And our class winner was Cooper Evans, Burnett County 4-H. Breeder is Evans Livestock. Congratulations. We do need our first and second place goats from classes one through four to come check in and pre-weigh first and second place goats from classes one through four.
Class 5, Five More Crosses, to be checking in. Class 5, Five More Crosses. Again, our first and second place goats from classes one through four should come check in for pre-weighing. Our class six goats can start lining up out in the holding area.
Folks, let's give these goat exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. Folks, let's give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. Folks, if you have a first or second place GOAT from classes one through four, you need to check in. We're missing several of you. We need you to the holding it to the show ring. First and second place goats from class two. We need you to the show ring immediately.
We stepped it up here in class number five. I mean, uh, toughest top four we've gone through. I mean, these are just uh, really good goats up here. And uh, th this one up front's an outlier. Uh, and, and my question was, you know, does he have just quite enough right out of his pin set and right from behind? But you watch this guy go. He's so wide and square to his corners. That's the most unique one from the side we have seen thus far through five classes as far as how one's shoulder is laid onto their body wall, how up they are in their chest, and still to be stout, scold, and right in their rib cage. Uh, I mean, just from a three-quarter standpoint, this goat is so seamless and how he lays his shoulder onto his body wall, come into that round of a rib cage and be opened up up high to be that big-footed and square and then still handle it that good out in motion and from the side. Again, he is not just the most massive in his pin set or his outer stifle shape. Uh, that thing is just absolutely beautiful from the side as far as how a show goat to me should probably be made and you think about taking a picture with one and that one right there is one that uh, is just awfully awfully good from the side and that young lady does a good job driving him very unique one and I just decided uh, that that was the outlier of this particular class it was always between these two though because I think this young man's black headed one is awfully good I mean he is so opened up and rounding his body shape and of, of the pair of probably most powerful goats right here in two and three he still handles it I think really good in terms of his structure out in motion. He's right in his blade. He's still okay in his knee out in motion. He has a long hip and he's comfortable in his stride. As we get a little nitpicky and comparative right there, although he has the advantage in terms of just true width and true muscle within our top pair, I can probably get just a little more nitpicky as an individual on that particular goat. I think he's a little bigger at the base of his shoulder. He's just an inch or two shorter in his neck relative to probably proportioning perfect in his length of body. And then his top line is not just quite as smooth. So as I was going back and forth between those particular individuals, I thought to myself, which one is probably just a little more unique as an individual and just hits me just a click harder. And it's that young lady's kind of blonder headed one right there. That's a tremendous pair of goats right there. Young lady, uh, this is one of the stoutest goats that's walked in the ring right here and several times when they've just overwhelmed our class in terms of width and muscle. We've had a couple goats that'll come out in the champion drive that won their class for those particular reasons. You kind of ran into a pair of hammers right up in front of you and I think we can just pick on just shoulder and knee on this particular guy just a little bit more. The way he'll pull his hawk, set down on a little weaker pasture and outside of his body wall just a little bit right there from behind is where I change that guy. But if we talk about just an absolute barrel of a rib cage, a great big powerful back and a big pin set and lots of stifle, tremendous carcass go right there young lady. He's just a little out in his skeleton. I just modify him there ever so slightly or kind of darker headed goat right here and he has some big upstanding rack shape that's an athletic bodied good looking goat there that certainly is just a little better structurally in terms of the goat that we lead off so I thought three and four were awfully close right there I wish I could change the shape of his head and his jawline just a little bit I think that goat maybe just doesn't balance quite as good in his top line and out of his hip and is maybe just a little off in his edges there to just go ahead and beat the goat right in front of you but that's a tall fronted athletic hard touching shapely good heighted goat right there that the young lady does a good job driving I certainly prefer his hind leg out in motion young man's just got a really fundamental goat right here he's wide he's thick he's big topped young man we ran into our toughest top four of the day so far he's frailer structured he's not near as massive in terms of the top side of his skeleton or his hip relative to those four outliers right in front of you that's a very good goat in his own right that's honest lean big uh, round bodied big backed uh, a lot of good right there young man he just doesn't have some of the extra bells and whistles of the ones right up in front of us same with this one young lady uh, a wide square productive goat right there that's big topped and thick ended one that gets a little open at the top side of his blade and rounder at the base of his shoulder he wants in motion to just get a little rounder out of his hip and not stay quite as coordinated and just well balanced out on motion as we get them on the lap and on the walk as our top five but a very very nice class let's give them all a very nice round of applause Class six goats can be checking in.
Well, let's give all these young folks here a real nice round of applause in this fine wool cross division. Uh, really a good class right out of the gate. Uh, again, uh, it's one of those that uh, maybe not all look exactly the same, but I think from a standpoint of some muscle shape, uh, a tremendous amount of top shapes, racks, uh, big hips, big rumps. Uh, there's just little, little things that kind of separate, uh, in my opinion, between these as we kind of study them and, and work your way through them and trying to make them, I guess, satisfy myself there from the standpoint of the logic that I've kind of worked through them. And uh, the class winner for me, I think, as we get him in motion, I think that's where he just becomes a, a, a stellar beast. I think he has just the standpoint of his look. He's tall fronted. He's good looking. His top line stays in balance, I think, extremely well. I think he's one that's got tremendous amount of product and shape. He sits down on a great big old forearm, like the way he tucks into his blade and in the fore rib and maintains a, a balance when we get off to the side of him. He's got a big old upper hip and rump working into him. Does he have as big a top in him? Maybe not quite as much as our second place one. That guy has got a monster back and top and upper rack working into him. I guess that was what made it a little more difficult, uh, I think, because I, I like the up and out that this class winner's got in relationship as our second. I think a little give and take and any other day. A guy may switch them around a little bit depending on the judges. But I think uh, these two, I think, are ultra powerful. This second place one, again, I, the product and shape is really good. Uh, you get them out here in motion and stuff, and the young people do such a great job of presenting them when they're standing there in motion. I'd probably give it. He gives up just a, just a nickel of length of body and then wants to run downhill just a hair, and that's the subtle difference between them folks. There ain't no, nothing more than that. There's lots of product. Both of them are ultra lean, uh, still stout enough in their feature. That's a little bit of a subtle difference. Like this one in third, I think muscular shape is really good up on the top side. I think he opens up really good. I think for as you work up through the, out through his dock and maybe working down his dock, maybe give him a little more dimensional shape compared to this top these top pair. But I think one there, again, that finds some muscle shape down in the lower part stifle, I think is pretty well. I think he did, does a nice job, a really good presence to him. The one that I go in fourth, love the look this young lady's got. And when we get this one in presentation, looks good, stays assembled, runs out of a little bit of muscular shape compared to these top three that we've got out here. And our fourth one in here for me, probably just a little leveler and squarer than some, a couple of the others I've got right below them. Uh, that's got a lot of product working into it, still lean enough. It uh, doesn't have maybe some of the extra bells and whistles that these top two or three have got out here, but I think one that kind of does a very good job that you can't poke a lot of holes into. So, again, give these kids a real nice round of applause. Congratulations. Okay, we're having our... Division One Goat Drive coming out of Class One, first place went to Laney McCall, Archer County 4-H. First place out of Class Two went to Hazen Hoffman, Catula FFA. First place out of Class Three went to Carter Sherwitz, Fisher County 4-H. First place from Class Four went to Cooper Evans, Burnett County 4-H. First place from Class 5, Reagan Miller, Denver City FFA. Second place from Class 1 went to Katie Jewett, Kaufman County 4-H. Second from Class 2 was Danica Walker, Glasscock County 4-H. Second from Class 3 was Kellen Ardell, Ico FFA. Second from Class 4 was Ava Allensworth, Brazos County 4-H. And second from class five was Lucas Winter, Gorman FFA. Folks, let's give these exhibitors a big round of applause.
Class 5 GOAT results, 10th place was Brazos Blue, Hill County 4-H, Breeder of Stork Livestock. Ninth, Addison Peck, Wilson County 4-H, Breeder is Wright Show Goats. Eighth, Hadley Woody, Hill County 4-H, Breeder is Highview Ranch. Seventh, Kelly Wright, Boys Ranch FFA. Sixth, Kate Higgins, Bell County 4-H. Fifth, Tanner Hawes, Falls City FFA. Fourth, Paige Harder, Idaloo FFA. Third, Brianna Amel, Klein's, Klein Collins FFA. Second was Lucas Winter, Gorman FFA. Our class winner was Reagan Miller, Denver City FFA. Well, a tremendous Division One here on the goat side. Uh, I, I just think uh, a lot of high-quality goats that have come through. So first and foremost, if you would, put your hands together ringside. Congratulate these young people for getting them back out here and getting them drove out here into the drive. Always a goal and a step, I think, is to make it out of class out here and give yourself a chance. Uh, uh, I realize that they are not just all exact replicas of each other. We said in class one, we're going to try to find the ones that put the most good and the most unique things together in class one. That, that was that burly stout goat that just overwhelmed everything in terms of mass and power. In class two, it was that extra high quality goat. Uh, that man, that that is one awesome loin edge in a goat. Uh, unique hip and hind leg and presence and front end quality. In class three, it was that black headed goat and specifically out in motion. Uh, he's wanting to fight the young man out here just a little bit again and not be quite as good of a show goat. But man, that thing out in motion, I think, just gives you such a high quality look. In class four, it was, again, a power go. And when we stand that thing still, just from a width and body shape and mass and still a great look and balance from this side, that's what came out of that particular class. Uh, uh, and in class five, it was just that incredible-looking blonde-headed goat right here that's good on his feet and legs and just so unique in the picture that he paints here from this side. And so I think that's the good that came out of each of those. As you ask yourself some questions, we critiqued them every single class on where they need to be better just a little bit all the way through uh, and I think we could go back and talk about those particular things but and as we get them out here we study them in motion we study them standing still we put our hands on them uh, I guess my goal to come out here was to uh, to use the ones that would be the most memorable to me uh, as far as putting lots of good things together and being unique and uh, to me there's a pair of them that do that very well that uh, uh, just are be the two that stick out the most in my mind in this particular deal we made the decision already our heavyweights here in class five will stick together as grand and reserve of the division. Congratulations. Our division champion goes to Reagan Miller, Denver City FFA. And reserve goes to Lucas Winter, Gorman FFA. Congratulations. Class four final cross results. Tenth place, Tanner Lott, Louise FFA. Breeder is Justin and Bridget Jonas. Ninth, Stella Sprayberry, Jones County 4-H. Breeder is Smithwick. Eighth, Anna Milliken, San Saba FFA. Breeder is Smithwick. Seventh, Carter Morris, Bell County 4-H. Breeder is Stoltz. Sixth, Dylan Wonderlick, Comal County 4-H. Breeder is Smithwick. Fifth, Livy Krippendorf, Comal County 4-H. Breeder is Smithwick. Fourth, Mallory Box, Samuel Clemens FFA. Breeder is Smithwick. Third, went to Bailey Dunlap, Runnels County 4-H. Breeder is Smithwick. 
Second place went to Stony Cooley, Taylor County 4-H. Breeder is Stolt Sheep Company. And our class winner was Raider McFall, Reagan County 4-H. Breeder is Newsome Livestock. Congratulations. Class seven goats can check in. Class six final crosses can check in. We have Devin Sisk Photography back as our official show photographer. Appreciate them being here. You can view and order photos online at devinsiskphotography.com.
and as several sponsors of Rodeo Austin, TELUS Equipment Solutions is your presenting sponsor of the show barn, the right solution for your equipment needs. Ozarka is the official spring water of Rodeo Austin. Ram, the official truck of Rodeo Austin's March events. You can sign up for your chance to win a voucher for a Ram truck at any of the Ram booths across the fairgrounds. HEB is the official grocer of Rodeo Austin. Frost Bank is a presenting sponsor of the Ultimate Scramble Championship. Holt Cat, Texas First Rentals, is a presenting sponsor of our youth auction. And Dell is a presenting sponsor of the robotics contest. Appreciate all the support of Rodeo Austin. Let's give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. We will take about a 30 minute lunch break after the selection of champion and reserve final cross on the lamb side and after division two selection on the goat side.
Thank you, Goat Exhibitors. Once again, we will take about a 30-minute lunch break after the thyme wool cross drive and after the Division II goat drive.
at entry 7045 on the GOAT side. As our young people are getting out here and setting these top five up, give the whole class a real nice round of applause. Uh, this is an incredible, incredible class. Again, I think the quality is extremely good. Uh, there's lots of nice, hard, strong decisions here as they kind of work their way through these top 15. And, and you can, again, can make some cases on some different places uh, as you work your way through them. And again, uh, it's nice to have the an opportunity to put your hands on them to kind of break those differences because quite frankly there's a little bit of differences in handling but the kids are such a do such a great job of getting these things set up and in presentation and and getting them in the look that we're kind of looking for from the standpoint of of judges and eye appeal and putting together products and shape and muscle that we're kind of looking for in one nice neat product uh, i like the one i'm leading off with real well i think he's as much totals up what i've been kind of looking for from the standpoint of of one that's got a really a nice kind of a show ring look. Uh, he's got he's really cracks open really good. When he makes a three quarter view coming around the corner there, he's got some chest width. He maintains that width all the way through the center part of his body. He's got a monster kind of a back and upper pin set into him. He's got a really neat three dimensional hip and rump working on him. Uh, and again, he's really extra fresh when you get right onto this particular guy. When this young man gets him stuck, uh, this guy, this particular guy, not going to change him in too many areas. He's one there that kind of puts the things together. He balances up and totals up, I think, really well. The one that kind of throws a little zinger in here for me is the one that goes in the second spot. Uh, I like him a lot from a standpoint when I get my hands on him. He has got a big back and a big old loin edge working into him. Works into a nice kind of a pin set. Uh, maybe doesn't come with maybe quite as much flash when we start talking about some of the bells and whistles uh, from the standpoint of a little more up and out and look as compared to maybe a couple of these others that I've got here. But I think truly, I think he's got more muscular shape. I think his loin is in better shape when we get up on the top side of him. Still manages really good rack and, and still balances really good when you put him in motion. So I thought he needed to be kind of the logical second spot. The three and four here, I like both of these a lot. I think these are both up and out. They got really good kind of a look kind of working into him. For me, I think the the one that just is, that goes in third doesn't show him maybe quite as much wear and tear. I think he's got a little more flank in him, his body and rib. I think his loin's just a nickel fresher when I get up on the top side, but I think one that's really good when we get right out through the front end. Young lady in fourth here, she showed herself into the top five. This particular one is really good built. Uh, he's probably, for me, just getting a little bit past 12 o'clock. When I get right up onto his loin, I'd like to freshen him, maybe drop dishes, a shot more into his flank, uh, and give him maybe a little more robust center. You probably caught on the weight thing, maybe just a nickel, but this one's presentation. Look, it'd take a wonderful picture. I just need maybe just a shot more raw shape and, and maybe a little more uh, up on the top side compared to these top three that we've got right above them. The one I've gotten fourth, again, another one you can't poke a whole lot of holes into. I think that one's fresh uh, in its shape. I think it's still on the upside from the standpoint of muscle. Feet, bone, foot feature is very good in this particular one that we get out there. Maybe a little rounder, not quite as long rumped, uh, maybe not quite as assembled as these top five, but I think this one ties together enough three-dimensional look with a good skeletal build. We need to make the top five. So, again, give all these young people a real nice round of applause. Congratulations. Uh, we start off Division Two over on the GOAT side uh, with, with just an absolutely tremendous top end right here and some GOATs that just uh, are really hard to make and get uh, me fired up to be able to sort these things and the quality. And, uh, you know, I, I studied on these top two for quite a while. It's nothing against particularly third or even fourth there that are very good GOATs. We'll talk about in a second. But I thought these two's ability to combine some extra just show ring appeal and look with the, the right kind of body shape and stoutness is very impressive and uh, I, you know I was torn between them because they have trade-offs and they're so unique in different areas and uh, while we can talk about the bells and whistles of this black-headed goat of being the longest necked fuzziest legged thing that's walked in the ring so far 
uh, why he wins for me uh, is that thing is incredible skeleton. Uh, and when he really, when I made the decision between the two of them, and both of them are great showmen, so it wasn't the difference in sh showman difference between them. But when we stopped showing them, this black-headed goat doesn't change. Uh, and it's because he's so perfect in his skeleton. I mean, he stays, his top line stays collected, his hip and his hind legs stay collected into him. Uh, he stays wide out there. And I mean, if you look at the angle of his blade and the set of his knee and how he's shoved up in his chest and his length of hip. And what we talk about when I teach in an intro of livestock evaluation, when we judge breeding heifers, they're supposed to fill their track in motion. Not very many goats can fill their track. That guy almost puts his back foot down where he picks his front foot up and just sets it down so comfortably and fluidly. Love that about him. He needs to be a little better in his loin edge. He could use just a shot more stifle shape. I mean, if he was just a little bigger loin, it'd be a no question to me. Uh, and that's where this goat in second comes in because his true athletic body shape and just his roundness of forib and mass up high, and he's really good, and he handles his skeleton very well. And, and so I think that was the question is, is do we uh, – take a goat that's good skeleton and better muscled, or do we give up just a nickel muscle and use the one that's the most elite in his skeleton and look, and you can see the choice I made. I wish I could set this guy back just an inch in terms of the top of his blade and his knee into him just a little bit more, and I think when we come off of him and that young man can just show the lights out of this thing, I mean, he gets him stuck to an absolute T and gets the most out of that goat. When he's not driving into him, I think that straighter blade causes him to just ease up in his top line. He doesn't balance quite as good just naturally out and just standing still out in the pin is what the black-headed goat does right up in front of us. But body shape, skeletal width, power, and still a good skeleton. That goat does a lot of really good things very, very well. Uh, very good goat for that to young man right there. Three's our power goat. I mean, he takes uh, what he's good at and is the best. He is the widest. He is the boldest. He is the thickest. Uh, young lady is just drawn on his skeleton just a little more. He's also just the biggest shouldered. He's the tightest in terms of his rear leg as we get him out in motion. But if you talk about opening one up with still a neat look up through his front end and a hard touching muscle shape, that one's really good. I just wish he wasn't quite so big shoulder and I wish he used his hind leg just a little better. Tremendous goat to be standing in three. Young lady's got a good one here. Good bodied, good backed, good hipped. He's pushing just a little weight up through the front third of his body compared to the rear third of his body to get me to proportion him just right from the side, young lady. But you stick him very very well. Got some unique pieces in this paint goat. That is a tall fronted, lean, high cut ability, shapely goat that's very athletic in terms of his body. He's a little frailer. He's a little flatter, young lady, compared to those ones up ahead of you. I wish we could drop his flank line in him just a little bit. Uh, another one that's very high quality here. He's got a lot of that trendy leg, or, uh, leg hair on here as well and fuzzy. Uh, that one's wide and square. Young lady, he's just a little mature to me. I read him just a little deeper, and I get my hands on him to me. That's the softest handling one that's got the most fat cover on him. And that's why we end up down here in six on a very high-quality goat. A couple really good goats I visited with each of these individuals as we pulled them. Very good class, very, very good top end. Let's give them a nice round of applause. Results from Class 6 goats. Tenth was Ryan Brewster Gallardo, Uvalde County 4-H. Breeder was Allen Ranch. Ninth, Lauren Calloway, Scurry County 4-H. Breeder was Chandler Showgoats. Eighth, Pat Higgins, Bell County 4-H. Seventh, Kaysen Bergen, Wichita County 4-H. Sixth, Cassidy Krieg, Weiss FFA. Fifth, we have Riley Valencamp, Runnels County 4-H. Fourth, Avery Martin, Atascosa County 4-H. Third, Taylin Totch, Gillespie County 4-H. Breeder is Holscher Showgoats. Second, Deacon Gann, Wichita County 4-H. And our class winner was Blaze Mock, Erath County 4-H. Breeder is Blue Team Weathers. Congratulations.
class eight goats can check in. Results from class five final cross. Tenth place was Miles Hoffman, Glasscock County 4-H. Breeder is Harwood. Ninth, Steel Skelton, Runnels County 4-H. Breeder is Smithwick. Eighth, Addison Irwin, Lubbock Cooper FFA. Breeder is Justin and Bridget Jonas. Seventh, Ellie Har, Idaloo FFA. Breeder is Smithwick. Sixth was Cotton West, San Patricio County 4-H. Breeder is Stoltz. Fifth, Kenley Holsher, Highland FFA. Breeder is Smithwick. Fourth went to Cooper Evans, Burnett County 4-H. Breeder is Struby. Third place was Emma Osborne, Lano County 4-H. Breeder was Stoltz. Second place went to Shelby Shepley Lloyd, Coleman County 4-H. Breeder was Smithwick. And our class winner was Shep Silvers Junction FFA. Breeder was Mad Dog Club Lambs. Congratulations. Our first and second place five more crosses from the previous classes can come check in. First and second place five more cross.
give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. We had a ring found in the ladies' restroom on the south end of the barn, found at the sink. If you can come to the show, show arena and identify it, we'll give it to you. Thank you, goat exhibitors.
really a nice class here again. I think uh, as you got out, get a chance to kind of step back and, and look at this class, uh, these ones for me I think fit together really nice. I think uh, there's some individuals in here that I think are incredible. I think as you watch them things uh, as they were coming in, you could tell there was going to be some that were going to push back and forth on each other. Quality is incredible. I think uh, as we watch the top end of this one, uh, there's uh, there's three of them, in my opinion, that just got extra power, got a little extra shape, got some muscle. I think it kind of comes down to maybe just a little bit of skeletal build uh, as you kind of look and you kind of study them. Uh, what I'm leading off with, uh, that one there gets me excited. I think one that kind of ties together some things that we kind of talk about that's not always easy to put together. I think that one's got tremendous back shape, working in a great big old upper hip and rump. He just ties together extremely well from his shoulder to his hip, from his flank to his forerib. Ties together, gives you a great kind of a picture, this one does. And then you get around the front side of him, he's got a very elegant kind of a front end, but still powerful and still manly enough to have the kind of shape that we're looking for to kind of lead off with. I think a very, really good kind of a spot to get started. I think the, the one that follows is the one that's right there with him, and uh, any other time I'd love to have him to win a class. I think he's really good also. I think shape, muscle, you get your hands on him. He's got a big old upper top, a big old upper rib working on him. He just doesn't sit down with kind of extra feature that the one that we're leading off with out here. I don't know if he's got maybe quite the extra flex out of his rear hock like the one we're leading off with, but power, shape, and muscle, he's basically second to none. I think that one's got a lot of good things to offer, and I think really comes into the second spot really, really well. Third comes in, and again, another one that's got a ton of product shape. He's still heavy bone and stout feature. Does the fundamentals, I think, extremely well from the body and the rib product and skeletal build. Probably from the standpoint for me, if I get off to the side of him, he want, does want to come unassembled just a little bit where he ties up into that loin and up into that upper part of his cage. But I think one, again, as you study him and you get your hands on him, he's still lean enough. He's still got more than enough muscle shape and neat kind of a look working into him. Our next ones that go fourth and fifth. And again, the fourth place one you can see uh, has got a lot of power, a lot of shape, still sets down quite a bit of feature when you start talking about feet and legs. Uh, he's probably playing out just a little bit when we start getting to these top three. We start talking about loin width uh, and probably freshness on the top side. And same goes with our fifth place one. I like to freshen him. Yo, man, does a good job. This one's up and out. Got a good kind of look like I'm looking for. It's a out hustle just a little bit on power, just extra base width. When we get up on the top side, the extra pin width as we watch them kind of work. So please give these young folks again a real nice round of applause. Excellent class. Congratulations. Adams Fab. Established in 2007, they build custom livestock pinning and equipment to fit all your needs. Hanger feeder rods, adjustable slam gate latches, and skirted panels, it all comes standard. Custom pins made by hand and hot dip galvanized so that you know that they're going to last. Adams Fab is a certified TIPS vendor and can design, fabricate, and install equipment to fit all your needs. Visit AdamsFabLivestock.com to get started today. A nice class here, I think. Uh, took me just a little longer to kind of identify which ones to get up to the top, but uh, then once we do, this young man's right, go here, won this class, and uh, wins so pretty handedly of this particular set, and it, it's just his ability to combine that extra width with the right kind of look and skeleton, and uh, I think he's got the power of the goat in two, yet so much better in terms of his shoulder and his knee and his top line balance. Uh, he, he's still just maybe a little out at his knee, and he'll plant just a nickel straighter in his heart 
Hawk, which makes him take just an ever so slightly shorter step as we set him out in motion. And we can probably correlate all that to his just little shorter hip right there from hooks to pins. Uh, when we stand him still, that's the one that balances like a good show goat. That one's really good in his body shape, really good in his muscle power and shape up high. Uh, and then that goat is easily the best on the move of our more powerful ones up here. So landed on him pretty easily for the young man. Uh, our, our EST in terms of power does come here in two. This is the stoutest skulled, widest chested goat right there. I mean, he's tremendous when you step around in front of him and just see the amount of clearance he has through his chest. His body shape and his top mass are just very, very impressive young lady with that. I think is just getting out a little bit at his blade right there in the base of it and causing him to come out in his elbow just a little bit as that lays onto his body wall. I wish we could just level him up out of his hip and see him go with just a little more flex and comfort as we watch him get out on the move. But, man, that is one tremendous carcass goat all the way through. This goat props up and is just a little taller fronted, a little taller at the top of his blade and hooks in stronger out of the back side of it. Uh, he's still just a nickel forward there in his knee, young lady. I didn't think he corrected two just enough in terms of skeleton and then this one's not just near as stout in his framework and his base he's the smallest footed and the frailest of these first three that we talked about as far as his jaw his forearm his foot size all the way through we just need to make him a little manlier in terms of his skeleton there to be able to get him up into our top two uh, young ladies kind of a dark-headed goat right here one that's just very fundamental I think one that uh, just falls out of balance a little bit for me in his top line and a little steeper out of his hip there young lady he just is a good wide constructed muscular goat that particularly to me just has a little more power to the goat here in five uh, and that's what sorted four and five to me from the side you probably make the switch for this spot necked goat i think this one could rival up by uh, two or three spots higher as far as this young lady getting him stuck and propped and running uphill i just called him not having enough to him young lady in terms of handle and just width and mass if that one just opened up and pulled apart in his pin set and truly just in base width as we watch him go in some rib cage there we could work him up at least two spots up into third right there because that one's very very good from this side this young lady's go right here i think hip forward is good uh, that one's tall fronted i think he's good in his rib cage he runs out of power and gas right from behind in terms of his hip and his stifle young lady to, and that just draws his balance off of him just a little bit again visited with these young people as we visit them down couple that i wish would just handle a little better young ladies black-headed goats just a little quicker maturing a really really good set let's give them all a nice round of applause okay we are ready for our fine wheel cross drive coming out of class four first place went to raider mcfall reagan county 4-h and second place went to stony cooley taylor county 4-h out of class five, first place went to Shep Silvers, Junction FFA. And second went to Shepley Lloyd, Coleman County 4-H. And from class six, first place was Tristan Neal, Smyre FFA. And second was Quentin Cox, Fredericksburg FFA. Folks, let's give these exhibitors a big round of applause. Just a reminder, we are breaking for lunch after this fine wool cross drive for 30 minutes.
there will be a random test out of this class of goats. The fourth place from this goats will go need to go to the testing area. Give these, let's give these young folks here a real nice round of applause. It's been a tremendous fine wool cross division. It, uh, it's, and again, this is going to be one of the impressions that I will take out of this particular event. Uh, and again, we don't see a lot of these up in the Midwest, but uh, quite frankly, the competition is absolutely incredible. I think the quality, and I get my hands back in all six of these again and love the handle, I think, from the standpoint of the, the freshness, the the extra spread width that they've got, the extra good skeleton uh, that they've got also as you're kind of looking to put them together. And, and then they come with a few of the extra bells and whistles, I think, from the standpoint of come with a little extra stoutness, a little more extra ring look that we've got in here. And, and so I'm pleased. I'm very pleased with these out here. Uh, there, there is one that, uh, and, and you, get your, you get your hands on him and get up on top of him, and I think that one is just an absolute beast. I think uh, one that ties together an incredible kind of look. He's one up into a heavier weight. They've managed to keep him still lean and muscular and shapey and still got a great look. Uh, young man, I don't know if I ever catch him out in a bad pose. You've usually got him in a good pose almost all the time, and I like him a bunch. Our heavyweight right here will be champion. Congratulations. I think it got, uh, for me, just a little bit closer on the reserve spot. And again, maybe have just a little bit of subtle differences, just in a little bit of types and kinds as you kind of work your way through uh, from the standpoint of some look and some shape. And, and again, the one that probably totals up for me, and again, love the extra freshness that he's got. I want to get on the top side of his body. I think shape and muscle, foot and structure is really good. He's, where he's, he's long where he needs to be long. He's long enough out through the front end. He's very long and level out of his hip and rump design. He has the next best from the standpoint of extra loin width and shape and extra power. Our middleweight there will be reserved. Congratulations. Our champion final cross goes to Tristan Niels, Meyer FFA. And reserve goes to Shep Silvers, Junction FFA. Congratulations. We do need a parent to come to the ring for each of those exhibitors. Class nine goat should be checking in.
Again, we will t be taking a lunch break before we start the South Downs on the Lamb side. Thank you, go to exhibitors.
Class 7 GOAT results. Tenth place was Gunner Krieg, Wilbarger County 4-H. Breeder was T3 Livestock. Ninth was Zachary Adams, West FFA. Breeder was Goats Livestock. Eighth was Tinley Totch, Gillespie County 4-H. Breeder was Tot Show Goats. Seventh was Cassidy Pool, Walker County 4-H. Sixth was Emily Sutton, Austin County 4-H. Fifth was Kylie Land, Brown County 4-H. Breeder was Blue Team Weathers. Fourth, Madison Elrod, Roby FFA. Breeder is Elrod Farms. Third, Laney Smusick, Belton FFA. Breeder is Gladden Showweathers. Second, went to Avery Walker, Uvalde County 4-H. Breeder is Hoffman Livestock. And our class winner was Caden Piscina, Ward County 4-H. Congratulations. Missing several for class nine. If you've got a goat in class nine, please come check in.
Entry 575, we need you at check-in. 575. Entry 7176. We also need you to check in. An interesting class. Take me just a longer to study through these top three. And uh, just weighing out, uh, you know, if I'm just being transparent, I don't know that there was one of these that just uh, reached out and said I needed to be the class winner quite as easy as maybe a couple other classes have been. And so that's where I was really weighing, weighing out and debating in my mind. And uh, I think there'd be as much discussion and uh, uh, ringside as any amongst these. I guess there was just one that, again, didn't just come to together as the totals goat in this particular class. I think a lot of really nice goats that we'd maybe just change one or two things about uh, end up on this uh, darker headed goat and it's here from the side or that one is without a doubt the tallest shouldered he's the hardest muscled he's the most expressive when I get my hands on him uh, and I think that one's the most unique as far as his underline and his balance here from the side looking like a lean high cut ability goat that's very trim and shapely to the touch he needs to be opened up in his forib and, and, and it's a weird transition because he's a little out at the base of his shoulder. I think that accentuates his forib shape just a little bit right there. That goat could certainly use his front skeleton a little better as we get him out in motion. Uh, but I just like how tall fronted, how athletic, how shapely, how lean, how cutability he is. Specifically compared to the goat in two, I read him just being more shapely out through his stifle and having a little more side view shape that lets him balance up just a little bit be better. Uh, this one right here is as probably burly as anything and so if we just want to use the widest constructed, stoutest goat and call him just good enough looking that can be the case I do wish he had a little more shape right through his lower leg young lady he'll plant that rear hawk a little straight and get a little longer and weaker on that pasture right there as we set him out in motion to me he'll just drop out and get just a little deeper and plainer in his look uh, that young lady's a good showman when she gets him propped up I think that one's awfully awfully nice go here in third he's one of the other we're real wide constructed he's probably as good headed and good scold and wide chested as anything in this particular lineup I think he's very good and his foot size and his forearm. That's a big back, thick-ended goat right there. He's got just a little extra shoulder and height in him. When I get my hands on him, he's not as descript and just as hard touching behind his shoulder. To me, he's pushing the most fat cover of these initial three right here up over his forib and just maybe reads a little lower cutability to me than these uh, top two goats right there. I think a tremendous top trio there. You just got to decide where you want to put your priorities at. Uh, a nice balance go right here for the young man in four. I think he runs out of gas and horsepower in terms of his rib cage just a little bit compared to our top three main thing when we get him out in motion for not having quite as much power i don't know that one utilizes his hind legs
leg just quite as well. Young ladies here, I think, uh, is one that's very fundamental in terms of his rib and his power. I think he's got a great big hip and stifle. I like his depth of twist and the turn to his inner and outer leg a tremendous amount. He's just a little frailer and plainer to the side to me, young lady. I think he's just a little more conventional in his look, shorter necked, a bit deeper bodied, and just a bit plain there from the side on a really nice go. This one's certainly tall fronted. He's got a big stand up rack shape in him. I like his skeleton in him quite a bit, young lady. Yeah, that one runs uphill and is very good structured. His breastplate's sitting out in him just a little bit. That goat's just got the least to him of our initial six right here. He's the narrowest and the lightest muscle to this initial lineup that we have out here on the side. But very nice class. Let's give them all a nice round of applause. Entry 575, we still need you. Your group is about to go in. Class 9 is going in. Class 10 goats can check in. Class 8 results, 10th place, Mackenzie Whitehead, Keller CTE FFA, Breeder is Blue Team Weathers, 9th, Raina Joe Epley, Lynn County 4-H, Breeder is Epley Show Goats, 8th, Alfonso Garza, J.B. Alexander, FFA. Seventh, Hope Hickey, Carson County 4-H. Breeder is Triple D Livestock. Sixth, Brooklyn Howe, Smithson Valley, FFA. Breeder is Sanders Show Goats. Fifth was Schuyler Meadows, Montgomery County 4-H. Fourth, Briggs Bowers, Fredericksburg, FFA. Breeder is Jade Bowers Livestock. Third, Jacob Jackson, Milam County 4-H. Breeder is Lacopa Show Goats. Second was Paisley Aikens, Grayson County 4-H. And our class winner was Emily George, Barbers Hill FFA. Congratulations. We need parents for Emily George and Paisley Aikens to the show ring.
the results from the six class six final crosses. Tenth place was Riley Barrett, Tom Green County 4-H. Breeder was Pat Jackson. Ninth was Kenny Drennan, Runnels County 4-H. Breeder is Cook Club Lambs. Eighth was Jake DeLeon, Crawford FFA. Seventh was Taryn Grace Ribble, Brownfield FFA. Sixth was Gatlin Carlisle, Erion County 4-H. Breeder is Banowski. Fifth was Brandon White, Johnson County 4-H. Breeder was Struby. Fourth was Paige Winstead, Springtown FFA. Breeder was Stolt Sheep Company. Third went to Davis Etheridge, Highland FFA. Breeder was Newsom Livestock. Second went to Quentin Cox, Fredericksburg FFA. Breeder was 3K Ranch. And our class winner was Tristan Neal, Smyer FFA. Breeder was Newsom Livestock. Congratulations. Thank you, goat exhibitors. We will start checking in the first class of South Downs here in a couple of minutes. So you all be getting ready.
our Class 7 South Downs can be ch in checking in. Class 7 South Downs. Entry 2007, need you to check in. Well, unlike the last class, the decision to me was not uh, which goat was going to win. Uh, about the time he was three quarters down and every goat was in, uh, it was the, this young lady in the purples to lose this particular class because I think this goat's uh, awfully, awfully good. Uh, he's good headed, he's wide, he's round bodied, he's good looking, he's hard touching. Uh, you know, he's not the most unique in every single area, but to put that many good things into a package like that uh, and in this particular class of these contemporaries. Uh, that one's non-negotiable for this particular judge. Very, very nice goat young lady to go ahead and lead off with. Then I thought it was a little tougher, two, three, and four. And I know uh, I've been harping on front skeletons and twos. Uh, we can see he's too forward in his knee. Uh, but uh, outside of that, I think that one's the uh, neat-looking goat here. That's hard touching. I like his length, the hip, and levelness out to his tail just a little better than our goat in third. And I get my hands up on him. I sure appreciate how good he is up in terms of the top side of his skeleton hard, fresh, touching, expressive, lean, high cutability goat. I'd sure like to give him just a little bigger back leg, young man. More than anything, I'd like to set him back in his shoulder and that front knee and just get him more secure in his front skeleton right there in a real nice weather to be standing in second. Uh, good fundamental weather here in third, and I know I hit on him just a little bit steeper out of his hip, but I think that goat out in motion. Sure like how wide and square he is. I like him how true he is in his foot size and his forearm. I think that goat's just 
natural skeletal width and body shape is what puts him over our goat here in four, and specifically how he's a little bigger out of his upper pin set and just a little deeper in his twist there. Uh, goat gets just a nickel softer to the touch, just a little steeper out of his hip there when we set him in motion to be able to get him up into the second spot. I thought that was a close decision there. Young lady does a good job with this one right here, and he is very fresh to the touch and probably just a little thinner hided and leaner than the goat that we talked about just in front of him right there. Uh, I think a goat that'll get just a little frailer when we watch him out in motion. The way he's uncoordinated out of his rear leg, he'll pull his hawk in and set his foot outside of the plane of his body wall right there is where I change that particular guy just a little bit. Our white-headed goat is tall-fronted. He's shapely. I think this goat's got some neat pieces. He just comes kind of piecey from the side, young lady. He gets a little rocky in his top line, a little rough there at his hip loin junction, and a little low in his tail set. Just could never get him to balance up quite as well. And then go here that I think, again, from a fundamental body shape, hard muscle standpoint, carcass goat standpoint, very good. I think that's a little frailer structured goat. That's a little shorter necked and deeper about his breastplate. Just a little flatter in his jaw, not stout in his head right there to be able to rival our top end. A good class again. Please give him a nice round of applause. Very good class winner. Entry 2007, your group is about to go in the ring. Once again, our first class of South Downs should be checking in. Again, we did find a ring in the ladies' restroom on the south end of the show barn by the sink. So if you're missing a ring, you might come and identify it. Results from class nine goats. 10th place was McKinley Burgess, Young County 4-H. Breeder was Taylor Showgoats. Ninth was Julie Lipka, Kerr County 4-H. Eighth, Kennedy Surratt, Smithson Valley FFA. Breeder was 1170 Goat Company. Seventh, Wyatt Renfro. Brewster Jeff Davis County 4-H. Breeder is BMK Showgoats. Sixth, Riley Titsworth, Kendall County 4-H. Breeder is Hutto Livestock. Fifth, Avery Rawson, Robertson County 4-H. Breeder is Ripley Newsom Showgoats. Fourth, Briley Edmondson, San Saba County 4-H. Breeder is Ebling Showgoats. Third, Jake Cowley, Randall County 4-H. Breeder is Cowley Livestock. 
second, Ford Brooks, Burnett County 4-H. Breeder is Evans Livestock. And our class winner was Tana Winberg, Williamson Deer Park, FFA. Congratulations. Still need two more exhibitors to check in on the South Downs side for that first class of South Downs. First and second place goats for classes six through nine. And check in if they have not done so. First and second place goats for classes six through nine. That'll be for the division two drive.
Class 8 South Downs can check in. Let's give these exotic exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. Again, our first and second place goats from classes six through nine can check in.
still missing four of our first or second place goats from classes six through nine. Please come check in. And again, your eight class eight South Downs should be checking in. This particular class, there's a pair that sort up and I think just stick out in terms of the antagonistic traits they put together and uh, just put the most totals together pretty handedly for me. And I think both are awfully good. Uh, there's a lot of trade-offs between them. The biggest difference is when I get my hands on him. That goat up front's leaner and more shapely. He's crisper in his rack. He's more pulled apart uh, and just square out to his loin edge right there. And then I like that goat's uh, levelness, a hip, and just the posture of his rear leg as well. He has just a little extra set there probably, uh, but I think that gets a, allows him to get out and go plenty good. Biggest thing, I'd like to stout him up in terms of his framework just a little bit. He's just a little frailer down there in his foot size. He's not near as just stout and rugged in terms of his forearm and his skull is the goat here in second and that's where I think it's close because this guy is burly he's wide and opened up got a great big forearm in him love the shape to his forearm and he's got plenty of dimension up high and from behind young lady he's just a little softer to the touch he's not quite as crisp and that fresh texture that he has right over his rack or the edges of his loin and how he hooks into the front side of his hip right there and then again he'll plant just a nickel straighter to me in his hind leg as we get critical on him and i think a nice pair of them there to go one two i think very interesting you could switch things around three four five six on down the line just a little bit thought the next most massive good carcass go here that was acceptable from a structure standpoint i landed and three. He's a little plain fronted. He's getting some chest and pushing just a little extra cover and maturity on him, young lady. That's where we'd like to change him. He's not near as attractive and youthful as our top pair right there. Standing still, and when you get your hands on this particular blonde-headed goat, uh, he could play with the top two. I mean, he is awesome in his true body shape and how powerful he is up high. Young lady, we got to change the rear third of that one. Skeleton, he's just too steep-hipped. He kind of throws his back leg around just a little bit too much set to his hawk there and so if we change that on him he moves up one spot for sure and starts to push our top pair just uh, pretty hard there young lady nice goat right here young man he's wide constructed he's big ribbed he's big back I think right here from behind is where I change him. He just narrows up to his tail a little too much and to his base. If we'd blow him apart and give him just a little bigger rear leg, he could work up just a little bit better. Tall, upstanding goat that's hard-shaped and lean and high cut ability. Young lady's just a little out of balance to me as far as he's a little longer in his blade and his chest than he is in his flank line. Just a nickel steeper out of his hip and frailer in his hind leg. I just can't get him to balance quite as good as the ones up ahead of us. But again, a really nice class. Let's please give them all a nice round of applause.
first place from class seven goats. You're, the division drive's about to go in. We need you now. Okay, we are ready for our medium weight drive in the market goats. Coming out of class six, first place went to Blaze Mock. Out of class seven, first place was Caden Piscina, Ward County 4-H. Out of class eight, first place was Emily George, Barber Hills FFA. Out of class nine, First place was Tana Winberg, Deer Park FFA. From class 10, first place was Lauren Thompson, Bell County 4-H. From class second, uh, class six, second place was Deacon Gann, Wichita County 4-H. From class seven, second place was Avery Walker, Uvalde County 4-H. Class 8, second place, Paisley Aikens, Grayson County 4-H. Class 9, second place was Ford Brooks, Burnett County 4-H. And from class 10, second place was Z McCall, Archer County 4-H. Folks, let's give these GOAT exhibitors a big round of applause. Class results for class 10 goats. 10th place was Clegg Bays, Axtell FFA. 9th was Allie Haynes, Brownwood FFA. Breeder was Blue Team Weathers. 8th, Conley Martin, Wilson County 4-H. 7th, Keeley Ham, Bell County 4-H. 6th went to Haley Satterfield, Jordanson FFA. Fifth was Pace Evans, Pecos FFA. Breeder was Box E Show Goats. Fourth, Tori Peters, Alvin FFA. Breeder was Team Peters. Third was Hadley Stoltz, Tom Green County 4-H. Breeder was Stoltz Show Goats. Second, Z McCall, Archer County 4-H. Breeder was Shrank Show Goats. And our class winner was Lauren Thompson, Bell County 4-H. Breeder was Blue Team Weathers. The breeder on that sixth place was Groat Ranch Show Goats. Congratulations to these exhibitors. Well, another division, just really, really fun and really like my lineup as I get back out here on just uh, real high quality goats on the front line and similar on the back line there. Uh, a couple of those classes were close between first and seconds. A few of them I thought uh, were pretty standalone winners, but I'm just super thrilled with what we have here in, in the front line and right behind them and just know how hard it is to make these things and feed these things right and get them this late in the year to still come out and be athletic and fresh and good to the touch. 
touch. So again, please put your hands together. Congratulate these young people. I think just an outstanding drive out here. They should be very, very proud of getting out here. Uh, uh, just briefly talk them. Um, uh, we talked this black-headed goat, how unique he is in terms of his skeleton, length and neck, foot size, all those things. You know, does he just have just quite enough over his loin edge and out of his hip? That's my question on him. And that second place goat, that was a close pair there. If we could have just laid his knee back in him just a little bit and stout him up at the ground, on oh, his body shape and touch and hip rivals uh, anything out here and really, really good. Standing still, I think this goat's good. I mean, that is one boxy, opened up, good ribbed, big back, thick-ended goat right there. He's just a little shorter bodied. My main gripe with him, young man, is I just don't know if he's quite long enough hipped, and when we watch him out in motion, can that one just plant and push and utilize quite a flexible enough hawk? Oh, man, the front two-thirds of that goat are almost ideal in my mind right there. Uh, this goat right here, I think, draws a great picture from the side. He's tall-fronted. He's good in his shoulder and his underline. He's pretty good on his feet and legs. He's hard-muscled. Is he just quite opened up and cracked open there in his forib? I think that's your question on him. You know, is he just quite blown apart there in his forib and laid on smooth enough from shoulder to forib? Oh, man, he's sure good looking from this side. Our blonde goat right here that uh, comes out of this class, uh, I guess, class nine. Love his skeletal width. Love his body shape. I think one that's comfortable on his feet and legs. He's not the EST probably as far as front end length and extension. He might not be the EST as far as shape shape up high and so do you say he's good enough in those areas and appreciate just how many hard to things to put together he is or do you find one or two that are maybe more unique in an area is what's running through my mind let's go right here i think uh, hard shaped good skeleton tall fronted needs just a nickel more bone i think just needs to be a little stouter out of his pin set is the way i read him and where does that fall into the line right there so that's the way i read these uh, i think very very impressive lineup right out here. I think there's one that just uh, I, I have a hard time poking just a huge hole in. Uh, I think just so good from a basic fundamental width, body shape, stoutness, still good skeleton. Again, is he the freakiest one in this lineup? No, he is not. That young lady out of class nine, though, is my favorite. Congratulations to her. So we bring second in. Uh, I think that's a good goat right there and was a tough 2-3-4 uh, in that particular lineup. We talked about just wanting to set his knee back in him. I, I really think the other four class winners all come into factor right there. If you just ask yourself which one to me is the most unique and the most memorable, as we talked about that earlier today, the next most memorable one to me is this black-headed goat. He'll be reserved. Congratulations. Our Division II champion goes to Tana Winberg, Deer Park, FFA, and reserve goes to Blaze Mock, Erath County 4-H. Congratulations to these exhibitors. Entry 7921 on the lamb side. You're needed at check-in. We are taking about a 30-minute lunch break on the goat side.
Really got a nice start here in our down show. And, and again, I think quality is extremely good. I think uh, as you kind of watch and you kind of kind of evaluate and kind of go through them, <clears throat> for me, I think you just evaluate condition and body score from the standpoint of, of muscle and leanness and making sure we've got uh, the ones that we're kind of looking for that kind of tie some things together for that particular combination of basically checking the balances in it there. And what I'm going to lead off with, I think does that. I think really he hits you pretty hard when he comes rolling right into class. I think one that's uh, really cracked open to the bottom part of his chest floor. He's one that's got tremendous amount of shape. And he's second to none when we start talking about rack and up to that upper part of his loin and working up through his upper hip. And still got a really neat dimensional shape. Still really good in his rib and his undercarriage. And again, He's really good on his feet and legs. You watch out him out here in motion. Uh, him and this young man work together very well as a team, and I think really show off, I think, very well. Young lady in second, uh, I, like I told her, I apologize. She's This particular one has kind of grown on me as we kind of work through this class, and I think another one there that uh, didn't hit me maybe as strong the first time through, but I think one that really built good. I think it's really good design. I think one there still got a tremendous amount of rack and upper loin shape and still clean enough when we get right up over the rib of this particular one, get down through the lower chest plate, still relatively clean. I think one that's still got lots of potential yet. Uh, if a guy was going to go on further with him, I think he's still green enough and still got enough power and shape and hasn't hit maturity yet. And then we start giving up maybe just a little bit of little things. I think this third place one, again, young man does a great job. I think one that's a little more be up and out, still stout enough in his feature. He gets a little plainer for me when I get right to the front third of his body, down to the lower part of his plate. It doesn't have maybe quite the upper top shape that those other two have got right above him, but love the look, the design. I think this one tired to bring some bells and whistles from the standpoint of foot bone and up and out. I'd like to power him up just a little bit. One coming in fourth, uh, and again, one probably a little higher condition for me right now compared to the four above him. Great design, good look, level square. Tyson things, I think, really well together. And the one we're going to finish up the drive here has got a ton of product, a lot of muscle shape. Uh, maybe just a nickel tight behind for me as we watch this one out here in motion. I want to clean him up off his rib cage just a little bit also. So let's give all these young people here, again, a real nice round of applause. Congratulations. Class 9 South Downs and check in. Class 9 South Downs.
Class 7 South Down results. Tenth place was Kellen Hart, Hale County 4-H. Breeder was Neal Family Showstock. Ninth, John Brady Bratton, Bell County 4-H. Breeder was Jennings. Eighth, Anders Eckert, Gillespie County 4-H. Breeder was Jennings. Seventh was Anthony Eilers, Gillespie County 4-H. Breeder was Dan Vestal. Sixth went to Lila Bratton, Bell County 4-H. Breeder was Fritz. Fifth, Avery Walker, Uvalde County 4-H. Breeder was Harbor. Fourth, Addison Coleman, McLennan County 4-H. Breeder was Harbor. Third went to Quinn Hartley, Kaufman FFA. Breeder was Eaton Livestock. Second went to Maddie Whitley, Falls County 4-H. Breeder was Satterfield Southdowns. And our class winner went to Karsten Stevenson, Wise County 4-H. Breeder was Fritz. Congratulations.
give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring.
your class 11 goats can check in. Class 11 goats. Once again, class 11 goats should be checking in. Again, as the kids are lining things up, uh, again, I think really close. I think you get to maybe, maybe splitting a few hairs here on these top three, four, five of them. Again, I think uh, as you kind of study them uh, from the ground up, and again, I think them top three are really cracked open. I think they're really, really good through the center part of their cavity. They maintain a tremendous amount of muscular shape on the top side of their body uh, and, and really go on their feet and legs, I think, extremely well as we watch them out through there. The, the one we're going to lead off with, uh, again, uh, he's kind of the assembly of everything that we were kind of talking about. Again, the one that's up fronted, he's, he's cracked open. He's got a tremendous amount of shape. He's very lean and muscular when we get up over the rib cage of him, like the undercarriage, underline on this guy, and, and still got that dimensional shape. I think a real nice place to kind of get started. Probably a little more decision-making for me between two and three. Uh, I think two is just a nickel leaner when we get right up over his rib. Uh, and I do think probably has a little more square muscular shape when we get right up over the rack. And as we work up through the loin, comes with just a nickel more pin width. Uh, there's maybe times we get that one spread maybe just a little wide behind. May actually want to close him up just a little bit to give him a little more of an uh, outside expression to his hip and muscular shape to his stifle. But I think a really nice one there. He still has got enough set, I think, out of his hock and rear leg. That's probably the one thing on the on our third place one. Uh, maybe gets a little bit sta straight behind there as we watch that one kind of settle in in that particular position where we got him braced up. Uh, but I one there that, again, is really good looking. It's up fronted, tall fronted. Needs probably a little more dimensional shape to get around those top two, but more than enough uh, headed the other direction down the line here. And again, like the design mold, he does want to run maybe just a nickel downhill sh when he gets him in motion. But uh, that one there, again, I think is really good Bill. Very muscular kind of shaped one that comes out in uh, fourth. I think fourth and fifth kind of separated as soon as we started putting them in motion. To me, they kind of lost a little bit of their assembly from the standpoint of the extra stoutness and feature they possess or the muscle volume and staying together into kind of one nice, neat package. So let's give all these kids here another real nice round of applause on a really good class. Congratulations.
Entry 4737 and Entry 5763. Y'all are needed at check-in. Class 8, South Down Results. 10th place, Addison Hahn, Gillespie County 4-H. Breeder was West South Downs. 9th, Ingrid Magadence, Lano County 4-H. Breeder is West South Downs. Eighth, Tessa Garcia, Nordheim FFA. Breeder is Hawes Club Lambs. Seventh, Hanson Eilers, Gillespie County 4-H. Breeder is Eilers Show Lambs. Sixth, Brianna Kazik, Coleman County 4-H. Breeder is Will Byler. Fifth, Sydney Newsom. Edwards County 4-H. Breeder is West South Downs. Fourth, Briggs Bowers, Fredericksburg FFA. Breeder was Jennings. Third, went to Morgan Hernandez, Hayes County 4-H. Breeder was Jennings. Second place, went to Lala Palos, Corsicana FFA. Breeder is Fritz South Downs. And our class winner was Emerson Garner, Leonard FFA. Breeder was Fritz South Downs. Congratulations.
Folks, let's give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. First and second place South Downs can come back and check in. Class 12 goats can check in. Class 12 goats. Thank you, goat exhibitors. Once again, class 12 goats can check in. First and second place South Downs can check in. First class of Dorpers be thinking about it.
still need the first and second place South Downs from Class 2, the second class of South Downs.
We still need that first and second place South Downs from the second class of South Downs. Please come check in. Entry 2443, we need you on the goat side. Well, let's give all 15 of these kids a real nice round of applause. This is an absolute killer South Down uh, heavyweight class. Uh, incredible, I think, as you, uh, I know it's the best class I've ever judged on the South Downs. Uh, the quality is just incredible all the way down. Uh, I'm sure a lot of folks come to win this particular class and, and maybe win the whole thing when it's all over with from this division. And I think the quality is extremely good. I'm absolutely impressed. Uh, the amount of shape, the muscle uh, that these particular guys have got in them uh, and still maintain the, the skeleton that we need, the right kind of finish that we're looking for. And so it's, uh, I think it's really, really close here on the top end. And I, I, the one I'm leading off with is the one I, I haven't wavered off of him since he come in the ring. I think that one there uh, 
kind of does some things I think really well, especially when you get him in motion. Uh, he has got a great big center rib cage in it. He rolls into a big old rack and loin to really level out of his hip and rump. And where he gets impressed is when he walks away from you. That one there just tracks him down. He's square, he's wide, he's opened up. He maintains that width. When he makes the three-quarter turn right back at me, uh, that one is cracked open. He's got the, all the natural things that I need from a production anim animal with all the things from the standpoint of muscle and shape and leanness that we're kind of looking for. I think he does that, I think, really well. I, I debated for a while between second and third. I think my second place one just fits with my class winner, I think probably the closest. I think from the standpoint of his fore rib up to the front part of his body is very similar. I think he actually is probably a little, little neater right at the chest plate than my class winners get out through there. He isn't quite as explosive right out through his hip and rump. Uh, when you put him in motion, he does want to tip it just ever so slightly. And so it's one of those ones. Those are little things that doesn't, in the real things, the scheme of things probably doesn't make any difference other than the last two, three minutes and we're trying to line these things up. I love the look this young lady gets on this second place one because his profile is just in incredible. Uh, you got him looking the part. He does what he needs to do. He probably just see getting out hustled just a little bit more on muscular shape. The one that goes in third, uh, for me, I struggle just a little bit of where I want to kind of figure out where to put him. For a big one, he is ultra lean. He's very shapy. Maturity is starting to catch him a little bit. You can see where his chest plate's wanting to kind of drop out of him just a little bit. He's one that's, again, maintains really lean muscular shape. He gets just a nickel rounder out of his hip and rump. And, I, and again, I think I'm being really nitpicky on a really, really good one. I think this one here, uh, another time, another place, another guy could use him to lead with him, okay? I think that one's uh, got that kind of shape and muscle and still has the extra wow factor that goes to be very, very competitive. I think this is a really good competitive class. Our fourth and fifths in here, again, they're lean, they're muscular, they're shapey when you get up on the top side of their bodies. They're very sound on their feet and legs. I think they do a lot of the extra things still very well to make it into the top five. Congratulations. Great job on a good class of Southdowns. I was debating whether to have a piece of cake uh, at lunch, and I said, I don't know, that might be too full on my belly and make me fall asleep a little bit out there. I didn't have it. If I would have, this class would no doubt get your blood pumping and wake you back up because uh, this is a tremendous set of goats right here to start D3 afterwards. Uh, and I was debating and looking back and forth here for a little while, um, but it wasn't really to determine which one was going to win the class. Uh, that goat right there, outside of having just a little weird bump right in the middle of his back where it looks like, uh, I don't know if it's a little injury or something right there. Uh, wow, I think that thing is good. Uh, wide skeleton, I think just absolutely impeccable in the way his shoulder and knee is put on his body, his hip and his hind leg. I just love the structure of that goat, yet he's such a good fundamental carcass goat in terms of width and body shape and power up high a again i this he's got this one little wrinkle right there right there in the middle of his back that doesn't let his top line just be perfectly smooth uh and into his loin could be just a nickel better outside of that i think that one's got the crazy underline like our goat in second he's got a little more hip like our goat in third He's wide-chested, uh, yet uh, he, he's the soundest structured one out here by some margin, and, and really that's when he gets going and out and on the lap is really where he takes it for me uh, because it's hard to make livestock that good in their angles and still have that kind of width and power. So one that I like a lot, congratulations to that young man. Uh, in motion and probably, uh, I guess, just... From the side is where I like this caped goat to be in second. Uh, I mean, that thing is wild underlined. As we talk about a short blade and a jammed up chest and a deep flank and all those trendy things here from the side, that guy is really neat in those regards. Specifically, I like him just a little better out of his hip and hind leg than the goat that we're going to have in three. I read him just a little longer and pulled up at his tail there. I think just a little more flex to his hind leg. And when we set him out in motion, then he just keeps his loin settled in him a little better. He just a little little more natural in his top line. Now, it's not perfect skeleton to get him that jammed up up front. I think we've made him a little stilty there in his blade. His knee's coming up in him just a little bit. He is abs in a breastplate and chest up front. I mean, you talk about a cool look on a goat right up front. His skull and chest and forearm and just front view is absolutely impeccable. For as big and blown out and cool as he is up front and awesome ribbed, 
I will think he tapers just a nickel to his pin set and isn't quite as shapely in his outer stifle as the goats on either side of us right there. That's an awfully good goat to be standing in second. Uh, no doubt the best third place goat we've seen today and it win a lot of classes earlier in the day. Uh, this thing's body shape and just skeletal width and power and still balance is very, very good. Uh, a goat that to me from the side maybe gets just a little bit off right in behind his blade and then mainly out of his hip and when we set him in motion, he'll kick up in his spine ever so slightly. Doesn't let him get out just as loose and comfortable in his build and just quite as comfortable there. I still read that guy just a little better in the angle of his blade, the set to his knee, and certainly just bigger footed and heavier structured than this blonde goat that's going to be in four right here. When this young lady gets this one parked, that one's in contention with our top three young lady. That thing runs uphill. He's long necked. He's athletic bodied. He's round and hard in his muscle shape. He's expressive out of his hip and his stifle. His chest sits up in him good. And so I'm thinking, man, that was every day up into our top three. When we set him in motion, to me, that's the straightest, bladed, tightest need one of our first four. That's just the most fragile at the foundation in terms of his foot size right there. More than anything, I wish as we watched him go, he could reach and grab out of that front skeleton just a little more comfortable, toy him straighter and square his knee up into that front skeleton. As man from the side, he sure paints a pretty picture right here. Uh, if we could just maybe change this guy through his shoulder and breastplate and neck, young lady, I think we've got a really good go because he's good in his body shape. That is a muscular, fresh goat that's tuned in in terms of uh, his presentation right there. He's a little thicker in his hide, and he's got a little extra there at the base of his neck. She comes off him, and we see he's gotten just pushing out just a little bit there in his chest and bumping out there. When we set him in motion, that'll drop in him even just a little bit and throw him out of balance ever so slightly out in motion. Uh, when she covers it up and gets him shown, that's sure a good goat, but if we could change that front third of him, that man, he'd get up there. Cool colored goat here. He stands out, and I like his skeleton. He's so uh, kind of cocky-headed and just comfortable in his skeleton as we watch him get out and move and prance around the ring. You know, as I studied the top side of his skeleton, I just read that guy a little flatter in his forib shape, a little narrower out of his hip. I don't think there's just as much true goat in that particular goat. I thought he was a little later maturing, a little leaner and shapelier than our white-headed goat here in seven. I thought that was a close decision. Young man shows that one well. He got just a little soft on us right there. Tremendous class, really good top end and good class winner. Let's give them all a nice round of applause. On the lamb side, we're now competing for our South Down Breed Drive. Coming out of Class 7, first place was Karsten Stevenson, Wise County 4-H. Second in that class went to Maddie Whitley, Falls County 4-H. From Class 8, first place was Emerson Garner, Leonard FFA. And our second place was Lila Palos, Corsicana FFA. And then in Class 9, first place was Gage Laskowski, Bridgeland FFA, and our second place exhibitor was Whitney Drummond, Williamson County 4-H. So folks, let's give these exhibitors a big round of applause. Class 11 goat results, 10th place was Kenna Sufall, Freestone County 4-H, breeder was Sturt Showgoats, 9th went to Avery Waters, Leon County 4-H, breeder was Ebling Showgoats, 8th went to Willow Fuller, Wolf City FFA, 7th was Brendan Kennedy, Leon County 4-H, 6th was Riley Stinicky, Wimberley FFA, Fifth went to Chandler Kirksey, Bell County 4-H. Breeder was Blue Team Weathers. Fourth was Briley Wheeland, DeWitt County 4-H. Breeder was Stork Livestock. Third was Mackenzie Evans, Burnett County 4-H. Breeder was Evans Livestock. Second went to Coy Alexander, Walker County 4-H. Breeder was Finley Showgoats. And our class winner was Briscoe Black, Brown County 4-H. Breeder was Blue Team Weathers. Congratulations.
exhibitor 4786, you're needed at check-in. We're checking in class 10 Dorpers. Class 9 Southdown results. 10th place was Heath Lewis, Peaster FFA. 9th was Brett Bowers, Fredericksburg FFA. Breeder was Jennings. 8th was Cameron Guerrero, Live Oak County 4-H. Breeder was Fritz. Seth, uh, seven was Chloe Clem, New Home FFA. Breeder was Jennings. Sixth went to Jace Isbell, Williamson County 4-H. Breeder was Fritz Southdowns. Fifth went to Quinn Dixon, Sterling County 4-H. Breeder was Jennings. Fourth was Reagan Miller, Denver City FFA. Breeder was Jennings. Third went to Molly Harris, Idaloo FFA. Second was Whitney Drummond, Williamson County 4-H. Breeder was Ashley Club Lambs. And our class winner was Gage Laskowski, Bridgeland FFA. Breeder was Fritz Southdowns. Congratulations. Let's give all of our young people here at our South Down Drive a real nice round of applause. I think in a tremendous, tremendous division. And again, as you kind of, as we come back in here and we line up these champions, uh, they're class winners. And again, uh, real pleasing for me, I think, as you study them uh, from a muscular shape standpoint and shape and muscle and some things that are maybe kind of a little harder to make from a breeder standpoint of putting that kind of power and shape and still keep them things still has some look and keep their skeleton put together and I think these really stay assembled really good from their structural build uh, and tie that thing extremely well. I, the one there, there's, there's one for me that's kind of an outlier out here. I think that's just he's really, really cracked open uh, and he's still got a really, really good look to him. He's got a monster kind of a back shape. Big old wide pin set. Works down into a very muscular kind of a lower leg in him and I like the way he travels and tracks when he comes and goes out of both ends. I'm going to use the heavyweight here for champion. Congratulations. For reserve, and again, I think very close. I, I love the, the lines. I love the design this one gets out here. And again, uh, he, this one designs up extremely well. And he's right with him, I think, from the standpoint of when you get up on top of one that's got that kind of center body shape and an extra muscular shape, still very lean kind of a handle. He's up fronted. He's got a really neat kind of a look when you get off the side end. The middle weight will be reserved. Congratulations. Our champion Southdown goes to Gage Laskowski, Bridgeland FFA, and reserve goes to Emerson Garner, Leonard FFA. Congratulations to these exhibitors. So again, our first class of Dorpers should be checked in. They're about to go in the ring. Class 13 Goats should be checking in.
Class 11 Dorpers can check in. Thank you, GOAT exhibitors. Once again, class 13 goats will be checking in. Again, class 11 Dorfers should be checking in.
give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. Nice class here. I thought it sorted up to this top pair pretty quickly. And there's some give and takes. Uh, I, I guess for me, from his hip forward, I like this cape go just a good deal. Still like how much shape he has there out of his hip as well. But And that one is good, how his shoulders laid onto his body. His neck comes out so high out of the top side of his scapula. Good in his underline. I think a very fresh, hard-touching goat. That's the most stand-up in his rack shape. He's still good out to his edges. We can see he's just a little shorter-hipped and just gets that tail set in him just a little bit low, a little underneath of himself as he goes, and that's where we'd like to change him and certainly where our goat here in second has the advantage. But I think the front two-thirds of that goat, plus with that much hip and stifle shape in him, still is a unique place to go ahead and start with. I, I like this goat, though. I think his length of hip and use of his rear leg is good, his body shape's good, and good touching up high. Uh, I think if we had a showmanship contest, young lady, you might go ahead and win because you're an awfully good showman right there, getting that one stuck and just natural as you take that goat around the ring, and I appreciate that about him. Uh, you know, he does need set back in his knee ever so slightly. I like to stouten him up in his bone work just a little bit. He's not quite as aggressive in his shape out of the back of his blade right over his rack as the goat that we lead off with, but a real nice weather to be here in two. Uh, I thought three and four were close. I liked three as far as being tucked up in his chest and just a little cleaner there in his breastplate. I think one, again, that maybe is just a little leveler out to his hip as well. He's a little shorter necked, a little plainer in his skull, and a little extra high that just makes him a little wrinklier there at the base of his neck. Doesn't balance quite as well or just quite as unique as the top pair and a good fundamental goat. Uh, I think from his shoulder back, young lady, this one's awfully nice. Fresh touching. Big back, thick-ended, wide stifled. Uh, smooth him up there at his, at his jump muscle. Biggest thing up front. He's just pushing out in that chest just a little bit. When I set him out in motion, that drops and gets just a little plain in his look right there. And that's where I change him. Young ladies here, I wish we could just freshen his skin and his height up just a little bit. That's probably as much as anything what gets us beat. He's just not near as fresh as he is. I think he's lean. He's muscular. He's just not quite as fresh. A little tighter in his shoulder and his knee there as well. Uh, but I wish we could just freshen him up just a little bit all the way through. And then this weather right here I think is real attractive, youthful, tall fronted. When we set him in motion, he doesn't hold his balance quite as well together. He'll come up in his spine and get up underneath of himself just a little bit there, young lady. Uh, just not quite as big in his shape right up high. But a nice class, top to bottom. Please give them all a nice round of applause.
class 14 goats can check in. Another real nice start here in our class, our Dorpers, and I think, uh, and again, uh, to me, I think the one that surfaces up here, the young lady's out there leading with, uh, for me, I think as you get up over the top of him and she gets him all settled in, I think that one there is about as cracked open and still square built and still got a tremendous amount of shape, and he's still really lean when you get right up over the top of him, and and uh, as you get up over that design of him, he's still very square out of his hip and rump and still maintains their kind of a neat three-dimensional shape. And look, I think he kind of logically comes into that position. For me, I think it kind of to start this particular group. Uh, I think followed uh, the one that probably is, for me, is probably just a little more right, right in his loin today. I think the one that uh, I'm going in second with, just a notch fresher right in there. He ties in just a little nicer, a little neater out through there. He's not quite as elegant out through his front end. I wouldn't argue with you a lot between second and third. I do think third does have a little nicer, neater look when we get off the side of him. He's probably just not quite as good when we start talking with the loin or where he ties up into his upper part of his hip. I'd stouten him and maybe square him just a little bit. He wants to waver right there at the hock, just a little bit in motion. But I think those top three kind of push back and forth in a lot of different ways. Uh, the fourth place one, again, lots of shape muscle. For me, it gets a little bit rounder everywhere. It gets a little rounder out of his blade, a little rounder out of his hip and rump design. Uh, but uh, one there that's still got a lot of products, still really lean, still needs to make the top five. And our fifth place one as we come out here, and again, one that's very muscular, very shapey. Uh, one there that, again, you can kind of see as we stand out here, doesn't stay maybe quite as assembled as well off to the side, but very lean, very muscular, really opens up to the center part of his cavity and still has pretty good muscle up on top. We'll just kind of keep him kind of together where he transitions just a nickel better up down the top. But very good class. Let's give these kids out here another real nice round of applause. Congratulations. Class 12 GOAT results. Tenth place, J.C. Goodwin, Stephenville FFA. Ninth. Cassidy Westbrook, Hill County 4-H. Breeder is Custer Showgoats. Eighth, Kinley Chisholm, Lakey FFA. Seventh, Blake Burns, Eastland FFA. Breeder is J&J &J Livestock. Sixth, Michaela Holcomb, Decatur FFA. Breeder is Bryson Borgoats. Fifth, Ella Haynes, Brownwood FFA. Breeder is Shrank Showgoats. Fourth, Brindley Williams, McLennan County 4-H. Breeder is Fry Show Goats. Third, Lillian Mask, Grayson County 4-H. Second, Berkeley Struby, Tom Green County 4-H. Breeder is Hutto Livestock. And our class winner is Alexis Guthrie, Marion FFA. Breeder is Hivey Ranch. Congratulations. Class 14 goat should be checking in.
give these goat exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. Again, our class sport team goats can check in. Give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring.
Class 10 Dorper results. 10th place, Abigail Grone, Harris County 4-H. Breeder is Jade Livestock. Ninth, Zachary Adams, West FFA. Breeder is Drennan Sheep Company. Eighth, Henry Horster, Jackson County 4-H. Breeder is Drennan Sheep Company. Seventh, Ella Buff, Gorman FFA. Breeder is Wilson Hair Sheep. Sixth, Keeley Ham, Bell County 4-H. Breeder is Jade Livestock. Fifth, Riley Schultz, Randall County 4-H. Breeder is Jade Livestock. Fourth, Paisley Lord, Brown County 4-H. Breeder is Kelly Hair Sheep. Third, Staten Silvers, Junction FFA. Breeder is Kelly Hair Sheep. Second, went to Parker Cook, Runnels County 4-H. Breeder is Book Dorpers. And our class winner was Addison Helms, Collin County 4-H. Breeder was Sylvester Livestock. Congratulations. We did have a cell phone found in the ladies' restroom. If you're missing your cell phone, you may come see if it's yours.
again, uh, a really good class here. And again, uh, the top five here as you kind of look at those and all the way through the class, again, tremendous amount of shape and muscle and still keeping skeletal balance that we're looking for. And I think tie that, I think, together very well. I like that top pair to, as I lead off with. It's kind of a combination ones uh, for me uh, th from the natural muscle shape, the way they open up down to the lower part of their chest floor. Still got really nice kind of a look and balance when you start getting out through their chest plate and out through their neck and front end. They still got a good enough look. They got some length of neck, some length of hip and rump, and still some shape when we get right around the back side of them. The, the, our third place goat, I thought maybe to try to push maybe a little harder as I thought maybe we'd get into that top pair. And our third place one as he kind of come up. And I guess for me, you want to clean him up a little bit through the front third of his cavity compared to the top pair that we've got out here. And then we go fourth and fifth with a pair of the little bigger outline ones. And we kind of watch and study these guys out here. But I think for me, don't give quite as much natural shape to the center part of their cavity in relationship to the three that are right above them. But again, I think as individuals that are up and out and got a little more look, take just a shot more muscle to them, I think is the next step. But I think, again, very, very good, high quality. So let's give all these young people here, again, a real nice round of applause. Congratulations. A really good class over on the GOAT side and one that uh, was one of the more challenging ones for me to put together just because I think they're all uh, very good GOATs, but uh, I think you could justify and flip around. And so as a judge, you got to weigh out where you're going to put your priorities because uh, each of them have some class leading advantages. Each of them have probably a place or two that you'd want to just tweak on just a little bit. And I, I land on this one up front. I guess he's the totals GOAT to me. Uh, I think he's got just a little more skeletal athleticism and squ Squareness like our goat in third. He's a little extra bulky and stout relative to third, com uh, like second uh, compared to third there. I, I think that's the pair of stouter goats we lead off with right up here. And yeah, he's the leanest and the freshest in terms of his shape and just the hardest handling up over his body wall. And to me, just the highest cutability there. You know, is he the biggest out of his hip or stifle or just his rear bone? No, that's where we change him. But I think that's an athletic goat that's up fronted, good chested, youthful still in his look as we're getting up to these big heavy weights and specifically compared to the goat here in two i just like his shoulder and how it blends onto his body just a little better he's a little thinner at the base of his neck and while not as stout when we watch him go away i actually think he keeps just a little more natural base width and squareness all the way down to the surface if, if we just want to get to a three-quarter view and say which one's the stout goat young ladies here wins the class because that is one stout headed wide chested big caged wide constructed goat he will narrow up just a little bit right underneath as we watch him track right away from us. Uh, true to antagonisms of a power goat, he is just a little coarser about his shoulder and his neck. He's just a little tighter when we ask him to get out and go. But I think a tremendous goat there to be standing in two. Uh, best view of this uh, goat in three is when the young man takes him on the loop. I do think that this one is the soundest structured. He's awesome in his shoulder and his knees, long hipped and flexible in his hind leg. Uh, you know, when we get here to the side, he's just a little easy in his top line. I don't read him as big out of his hip. Biggest thing, I get my hands on him. To me, he's just probably the softest up over his body wall and the heaviest condition of these initial three right here. And that's where I'd like to just tuck him up and make him just a shot leaner right there. But a very, very nice weather to be standing uh, all the way in third. This weather standing still and hip forward, I think, is very good. You talk about a neat chest floor, one that's opened up right there at the base of his sternum and tucked up and absent of a breastplate. Good scold, good ribs. When we set him in motion, he's a little shorter hipped. He'll just never flex his hawk. He just kind of throws that back leg and he'll never actually sit down and flex and use that hind leg like I'd like him to see right there. Uh, if we change that, that goat could rival our class winner all the way up to the top. Same, same with this goat right here. Some maybe different structural issues, but it's structure that gets us down into five. And, you know, he was clear down at the end of the line because we waited to pull him uh, after I handled him. And he is a tremendous bodied, tremendous touching goat right there. I didn't pull him on the initial pull because I thought he was just a little tight structured. As I continue to study him and watch him through, and that is one opened up, round-bodied, big-topped, thick-ended goat right there. I just wish he could go with a little more comfort out of his shoulder and knee. I wish he could go with more flexibility out of his rear leg. If you say he's sound enough or you just want to power cut him out, he's probably up in our top pair right there. I thought he was wound just a little tighter than what I like him right there. A good goat here, especially hip forward. I think he's good in his chest and his forehead and handles good. 
gets just a little too steep there out of his hip. That throws him out of balance just a little more than what I'd like, young man. Maybe not just quite as aggressive in his shape as the two right up in front of him, but a really, really good deep class. I thought these six were very challenging to put together because they all had a lot, a lot of good tooling, very hard to make, but each had a thing or two you'd want to tweak. So let's give him a big round of applause. Congratulations on a very nice set. Class 12 medium wools needs to check in. We are now ready for our Dorper drive. Coming out of class 10, first place was Addison Grown, Harris County 4-H. And second place went to Parker Cook, Runnels County 4-H. From class 11, first place was Tatum Duncan, Lampasas County 4-H. And second place, was Haley Wilson, Troy, FFA. Folks, let's give these lamb exhibitors a big round of applause. Once again, we do have a cell phone that was found in the ladies' restroom, so you might come see if that's yours at the announcer stand. Again, class 12 medium wools, check in. Class 15 goats can check in. Class 11 Dorper results. 10th place was Knox Paget, Fredericksburg FFA. Breeder was Rich Ranch Dorpers. Ninth, Hadley Johnson, Medina County 4-H. Breeder is Kelly Hairsheep. Eighth, Brayson Reed, Stratford FFA. Breeder is Kelly Hairsheep. Seventh, Matt Collins, Idaloo FFA. Sixth, Kylie Burns, Eastland FFA. Breeder is J&J &J Livestock. Fifth, Blake Burns, Eastland FFA. Breeder is J&J &J Livestock. Fourth, Rayleigh Holscher, Bell County 4-H. Breeder is Kelly Hairsheep. Third was Gavin Slow, Tarrant County 4-H. Second, Haley Wilson, Troy FFA. Breeder is Wilson Family Livestock. And our class winner was Tatum Duncan, Lampasas County 4-H. Breeder is J&J &J Livestock. Congratulations. Let's give our young folks here at our door for drive a real nice round of applause. I think uh, really excellent set. Uh, and again, uh, I admired the muscle shape that these guys have got. Uh, you watch them in motion, and I was questioning how much total product was in some of them. And when you get your hands up on the top side of their bodies and handle them out through the rack and their loins and, and out through their hip and rump, tremendous amount of product working in them. Uh, they really crack open with some base width, and I think they do that things, I think, very, very well. I think I'm going to land on a pair of them that I think are very similar in their type and their kind. Uh, I like the extra power. I like the extra look they've got. They're very, very good from a standpoint of staying very square off both ends and tie together things that I like uh, extremely well, no matter of what breeds, what shape, or kinds. I'm going to use our heavyweight for champion and our lightweight over here for a reserve. Congratulations. Champion Dorper goes to Tatum Duncan, Lampasas County 4-H. And reserve goes to Addison Grown, Harris County 4-H. Congratulations.
Once again, class 12 medium wool, you should be checked in. They're about to go in. Results from class 13 goats. 10th place, Cole Muller, Blanco County 4-H. 9th, Megan Tolles, Brock FFA. 8th, Ava Birch, Houston County 4-H. Breeders Fry Show Goats. 7th, Brooke Lacasio, Huffman FFA. Breeder is Evans Livestock. 6th, Kaysen Newell, Falls County 4-H. 5th, Brindley Hogg, Lubbock County 4-H. 4th, Evan Sylvester, Denton County 4-H. 3rd, Trey Harbor, Jonesboro FFA. Breeder is Harbor Livestock. Second, Kaylee Otmers, Bandera County 4-H. Breeder is Blue Team Weathers. And our class winner was Brett Dreyer, Uvalde County 4-H. Breeder is Evans Livestock. Congratulations to these exhibitors. Entry 2686, your class is about to go in, 2686. Give these goat exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. Class 15 goats can check in.
Class 13 medium wools can check in. Class 13 medium wool. A belt was left in the exhibit hall, and that is now located in the show office. So if you lost a belt in the exhibit hall, check the show office. Entry 869, entry 5478, and entry 4009. We need you to check in.
and took just a little longer here to work through this uh, top end on these top six. And it was a close decision, six, seven, eight. And so took some time studying that. Uh, uh, my main thing I was taking a little time on is how to make sense of two through six because uh, outside of not having a very pretty head there uh, that uh, on this particular parrot mouth goat, I think from there back, that one wins pretty handily. We could trim him up just a little bit as we're getting up here into our 110 pound range. I mean, we could lean him up just a little bit. You talk about still a youth full appearing good chested good shouldered sound structured goat that's good in his hip and hind leg stout featured uh goat just let off pretty handily for me that's not what i was trying to decide on i was just deciding how i wanted to make sense of some different types and kinds on two through six a real good goat to lead off with i, I land on what i think is just the next stoutest one he's the next most opened up in his chest and just a little leaner than our white-headed goat here in three a little bigger legged than our goat in three or four there and so he's just the next burly stout Scold, wide chested, big uh, foundationed one that's big enough all the way in his running gear. Uh, you know, he's a little shorter necked and a little thicker at the base of it. He's starting to show his age and his weight a little bit down through the base of his forib and pushing a little extra cover there. That's where I'd like to change him just a little bit. Uh, same with this white headed goat right here. I mean, that thing is really wide constructed. Uh, that thing is still uh, probably just a little more youthful and uh, how I read him in his shoulder and in his body wall right there, uh, but handles a little soft as as well he doesn't handle his aggressive up high in his shape and then it, to me this guy's just again just a little shorter neck just a little mature up through the front third of his body and a nickel frailer structured right there to be able to go up any higher uh, but just a little leaner more expressive goat here and so i was trying to decide do i want to take him up i read him just a little off in his hip and his hind leg and just again a little frailer in his structure i'd like to tip him back in his knee but as far as being a very shapely powerful goat think he fits in five and six i thought had to kind of stick together they're kind of bigger more extended uh shallower taller fronted goats a little later maturing a little leaner uh i made the yet to make the call did they have enough to get up there i thought there was quite a bit more just goat all the way through on our first four right here particularly between these pair uh, I, this one may may give up the most in terms of four rib and just pin width and stoutness but man that's a tall fronted hard shaped lean athletic goat that i think at this big and heavy of a weight still looks youthful and tucked up and so you now that was my decision on where do you want to slide him because he's quite a bit different here than two three and four and so you got to decide which way you're going to shuffle and go with those i think he's awful good from the side which we could blow him apart in terms of chest width and body shape just a little bit right there there is just a little more chest width certainly in this goat right here in body shape you get up front man that's a cool goat in terms of his width up front how shallow and tucked up he is in his shoulder and his chest and he is long necked and tall fronted really good in his forearm shape and big in his back. Uh, he's pretty stilty up through his shoulder and his knee to me. I'd like to change him there. He's the tightest one as we get him out in motion. He handles probably just the uh, plainest, especially over his loin edge there, and just uh, just like to fix him there in his loin edge just a little bit. So that's the way I read him. Very different uh, goats there, two through six, and you kind of have to decide where you want to sort some different types and kinds. I think all very high quality young people are doing a very good job with. Let's please give him a very nice round of applause.
Class 4 team results. 10th place, Brandon White, Johnson County 4-H. Breeder is Blue Team Weathers. Ninth, Stockton James, Denton County 4-H. Breeder is Stork Livestock. Eighth, Hayden Groney, Keller CT FFA. Breeder is Blue Team Weathers. Seventh, Grace Moore, Tom Green County 4-H. Sixth, Zane Walker, Taylor County 4-H. Fifth, Cotton West, San Patricio County 4-H. Breeder is Mock Livestock. Fourth, Macy Leatherman, Weiss FFA. Third, Mason Simpson, Williamson County 4-H. Breeder is Stork Livestock. Second, Kylie Burns, Eastland FFA. Breeder is J&J &J Livestock. And our class winner is Carson Kirksey, Bell County 4-H. Breeder is Blue Team Weathers. Congratulations.
Let's give the goat exhibitors a hand. First and seconds for classes 11 four through 14 on the goat side, please check in. And class 13 medium wolves should be checking in. Class 13. Well, as the kids are working their way around over here uh, in our medium wolves, uh, we're fixing to have a real big kind of a day today at uh, these lightweights in this first class. There is a bunch of them that are really, really good. And, uh, and quite honestly, I think they're kind of fit lots of different fashions for different folks. Uh, these are the ones that fashion up for me. Uh, and again, I think uh, these all five are incredible uh, creatures. You may pick on them in a spot or two. Uh, as you kind of watch them out here, and again, we're trying to get them assembled together and, and try to get that combination. Uh, but, young man, I'm going to lead off with uh, this one here. I think uh, you get up on the top side of his body and tremendous amount of shape, tremendous amount of muscle working in this particular guy. Uh, this guy here uh, really cracks open extremely well uh, off both ends. I think he's one that's got tremendous amount of shape. Love his undercarriage. I like the way he's kind of tucked in up in the front side of his body and, and still has some depth of flank and everything kind of ties and needs together, I think, extremely well. Uh, a really a nice place to kind of get started. I think followed very closely for one that I think is extra complete. Uh, again, this second place one is stout. He's tall fronted. He's good looking. He's level out through his lines. I think one that still sits down some stoutness of feature. Uh, and still has a tremendous amount of product. I think he's just a, a really good one here that lays in here in a class that's very, very competitive. Love the third place one also. And again, I think the one that's tall fronted got a good kind of a look. Uh, probably gives up just a little more base width when he comes right at you. He wants to narrow just a little bit off both ends. I do think he stays, for me, just a little more assembled. And I think he's probably just a little more ready on the top side of him. There's a, probably a little more give and take between three, four, and five uh, if you wanted to pick a spot or two. But I think, for me, he's the most complete one that checks the boxes, I think, really well. The biggest loin one I've got is in fourth. I like that one, though. When you get into his loin of him, he opens up extremely well. Big O upper hip and rump working into him. When the young lady gets him set, it's one of those ones we want to work you right to the top end of right immediately. Put him in motion. He wants to come a little bit unassembled there right behind his rack and, and where he ties into that loin there just a little bit. 
love to see him stay together and stay gathered just a nickel better. And my one that goes in my fifth spot, uh, he's up and out. He's a good-looking one. I like one that's still got a tremendous amount of upper shape out through his hip and through his rump. He doesn't have quite as much working on the right there through his loin side of him. And, 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 and believe it or not, from the side, he's probably got the most condition on him when I get right up over his rib cage. I don't say it's too much, but I think he's pushing just a little more compared to the four that's right above him. And so extremely good class. Please give all these young folks here a real nice round of applause. Congratulations. Once again, our first and second place goats from classes 11 through 14 need to check in. Entry 5251, you need to come to the lamb side. Class is entering the ring. As we get to our last class of the day, uh, uh, the quality does not uh, go down any. Uh, I think this top end is just tremendous. Some really unique goats. Uh, uh, and yet this uh, top pair uh, kind of sort themselves up as some extra good looking, so youthful goats at this stage of the game. Uh, but again, in this particular class, I didn't think there was anything getting around this young man's goat right there. Uh, to be a 120 pound goat and still have a shoulder and a chest and a neck like that, underline and then just as we've been hitting on structure and he's big footed heavy structured long hipped good in his hind leg right there
Very nice go to go ahead and lead off with. Congratulations to that young man. This one fits with him very well. I think that he's athletic in his body shape and tall fronted. He's a little longer pastern. He's a little frailer structured, and he's not quite as neat in terms of his hip and hind leg posture right there to be able to get around that goat, but that's an awfully good one, young man. Uh, just a crazy ribbed, big back, thick ended stout goat right here. I mean, you get to a three quarter, and that guy is blown apart in his chest. He's crazy in his rib cage and back and hip. I mean, just a tremendous carcass goat with that. And so, you know, if you want to take him up a spot and just say that one's wild in his body shape and muscle shape, but I can understand. He's just a little out at, down at his shoulder and elbow right there. He's just a little frailer structure and to me doesn't just come with maybe the same unique athletic look as that top pair uh, right from the side. That's getting critical. One that's very, very unique. Uh, big legged wide-chested, big forearmed goat that's very good in his body shape. He handles plenty fresh up high. He's a little too straight in his shoulder and his knee for me, young lady. He'll taper back to his pin set and his tail just ever so slightly compared to our top three right there. I think a very, very nice goat in his own right. Goat right here, young man, good in his underline. I think he's good in his fresh rack shape. Nairs up and just rounds to his edges just a little bit. I liked his leanness and I liked his cutability just a little better than our black-headed goat. This one right here, I think if we could have seen him a week or two, three ago, I think that one has some really good things. He is wide and stout, good rib. Maturity's probably betrayed him just a little bit out here. He's gotten just a little soft over his body wall. He's reading just a little more mature in his skull and his front end right there. A young lady does a good job driving that one and sticking that one. Great way to end our show here with a really high quality class, a really high quality class winner. Let's give all of class 15 a nice round of applause. Once again, we need our first and second place goats for classes 11 through 14. We do have a showmanship on the goat side we're going to announce. We have a couple of showmanships. We have two reserve winners and then a champion winner. The reserves will see, receive jackets, and you all will need to see, walk, see Wanda Hawkins in the orange jacket that's by the, the scales to get info on the jackets, and then, and then we'll have a buckle that we, pr we have up here at the stand. So I'll announce our reserves first. Our reserve champions in no particular order are Lane McCall, or Laney, I'm not sure if it's which spelling that is, and Blaze Mock. If you are Blaze Mock or Laney McCall, you, can, you are receiving a jacket, so you can come and uh, give that information to Wanda by the scales. And then our buckle winner of the Lauren Julig Memorial Showmanship goes to Berkeley Struby of Tom Green County 4-H. So Berkeley can come over here to the announcer stand to retrieve her buckle. Congratulations to all three of these exhibitors. Results from class 12 medium wolves. 10th place was Claire Martin, Swisher County 4-H. 9th was Fallon Headfelt, Callahan FFA. 8th was Alexis Lizenby, Bell County 4-H. 7th was Z McCall, Archer County 4-H. 6th was Addison Robertson, Adaloo FFA. Breeder was Neff Livestock. Fifth was Cage Van Dyke, Potter County 4-H. Fourth, Ava Allensworth, Brant Brazos County 4-H. Breeder, breeder was Glasscock Club Lambs. Third, Bristol Fisher, Bell County 4-H. Second, 
Cannon Potter, Harris County 4-H, and our class winner was James Wilkie Schultz, Guadalupe County 4-H. Congratulations. Still missing the first place from class 12. We need you to check in. We're ready for the division drive. Again, we need our first place from class 12 on the GOATs. We need to start our division drive. Okay, we are ready for our Division Three drive. Out of Class 11, first place went to Briscoe Black, Brown County 4-H. Class 12, first place was Alexis Guthrie, Marion FFA. From Class 13, first place was Brett Dreyer, Uvalde County 4-H. Class 14, first place was Carson Kirksey, Bell County 4-H. And class 15, first place was Madden Wise, Brown County 4-H. Class 11, second place was Coy Alexander, Walker County 4-H. Class 12, second place, Berkeley Struby, Tom Green County 4-H. 
Class 13, second place, Kaylee Otmersch, Bandera County 4-H. Class 14, second place, Kylie Burns, Eastland FFA. And Class 15, second place, Weston Hendricks, Nolan County 4-H. Folks, let's give these GOAT exhibitors a big round of applause. We do need our first, our Division One and Division Two champion and reserve champions to come check in. Class 15 results on the GOATs. Tenth place, Maggie Jo Cantu, Victoria County 4-H. Ninth, Landon Holmes, Gillespie County 4-H. Eighth, Riley Barlow, Lavernia FFA. Seventh, Talon Pruitt, Abbott FFA. Sixth, Bristol Fisher, Bell County 4-H. Fifth, Lane Locke, Belleville FFA. Breeder is Jade Bowers Livestock. Fourth, Holden Wise, Brown County 4-H. Third, Briley Lacey, Tom Bean FFA. Breeder is Richardson Livestock. Second, Weston Hendricks, Nolan County 4-H. And our class winner was Madden Wise, Brown County 4-H. Congratulations. Class 14 medium wolves to be checking in. Well, just similar to our first two division drives, uh, if anything, it probably steps it up in this heavyweight drive. The 10 goats that we have out here, uh, just incredible in terms of their quality uh, to me to just be this uh, 
thick, uh, up at this weight, and still youthful, good-looking, good-structured young people driving them and just presenting them so uh, incredibly well out here. It just makes it extremely fun for a judge to be able to come through and sort this kind of quality. And so, uh, again, first and foremost, I think we just need to put our hands together, congratulate these young people on a job well done, just having a tremendous set of goats right here. Again, just briefly sharing my thoughts with you. Uh, I think this goat up front is awfully good in terms of his chest width and body shape. That one's probably the most spot on in that regard. He's so wide and square to his base. So we talked to him just having an awesome hip and hind leg. You know, earlier, and I still like his angle to his shoulder, he twists out just a little more on that front right leg and that front right foot uh, than I maybe initially thought he did in class there. And we talked about him having that little wrinkle right in the middle of his back. Uh, you know, but that thing I think is just so good in terms of chest width, body shape, hip, balance, proportions. He's not quite as tall fronted as another goat or two in here, but awfully, awfully good. This one right here we talked in class uh, from his hip forward is so good in terms of his chest and his front end. Uh, awesome in terms of his shape. Just a little shorter and just a little steeper out of his hip is your question on that particular guy. Awesome body shape, awesome touch and fresh, youthful goat. Is he just mass enough in terms of his framework? Is he just quite neat enough in his hip and hind leg posture and square enough on that rear leg is probably the question you have on him. Uh, as good on his feet and legs as anything's this goat here in four. He's big footed. They point straight and true and forward. He's still opened up. Maybe get just a nickel easier in his top line as he hooks into his jump muscle right there. We could shape him up just ever so slightly compared to a goat or two in here. Uh, but, man, that one is burly and stout and square and good skeleton. Uh, this one right here, I mean, from the side, to make one that tall fronted and neat in terms of his underline, awesome in his hip and hind leg posture is very, very unique. Uh, I think relative to his size, probably the only question you have, is that one just wide enough chested? Is that one just blown apart enough in his pin set uh, relative to being the heaviest weight goat out here? Uh, man, you talk about one that's athletic, good structure, tall fronted, extra good looking from the side. He fits all those things together. So that's how I read them. You know, as a, as a judge comes in, you start to think to yourself as you're weighing every class out, uh, division by division, you start to think, what are they going to look like coming back out here? Uh, and I told the interns, you know, uh, it's going to be a fun division drive right here. Uh, I think there's probably three uh, that are extra good right out here, and we're going to leave one of those out and really a second or two behind those that we could really get to a top four or five in those classes that are real good. Uh, and yet there's a pair that we come back out here to me that are just an extra shot unique uh, in terms of just having a few more extras to them that are just so, so memorable in my mind. Uh, uh, I'm going to look one more time. I'll select a grand and reserve of the heavyweight division. But please give them one more big round of applause. Excellent set of heavyweight goats. Our Division Three champion goes to Briscoe Black, Brown County 4-H. And reserve goes to Madden Wise, Brown County 4-H. Congratulations to these exhibitors.
really an incredible class again. And I think uh, as you look at these, and again, uh, you can tell the water's gotten very deep. Uh, I think quality is very strong. And I think as you kind of work your way through these, I think uh, there's lots of good ones here to kind of work your way. Quite honestly, I don't think I can make a mistake. I think there's enough good ones in here. Everybody's going to like certain ones for different reasons and different ways. I like the one I'm leading off with. I think, again, I think he's one that just kind of assembles everything together in a nice, neat package. When you get up over the top of him, he just really cracks open extremely well out through his upper part of his forerib. He's got the biggest, widest pin set that we got out there. He's level out through that pin set. He carries a really neat kind of deep twist and now to turn to his stifle when you watch him out in through here. Still stout and good looking and got a good look when we get outside the front side of him and I think ties it together really nice. Uh, I debated for a little bit between second and third of how I was going to land those two and uh, I think there's just enough extra levels and squareness right out through that upper part of his hip. Uh, this uh, the the wider appearing one just doesn't look like from the side at times I catch him not having quite as much muscle as those blues do out here and, and quite frankly he does. I think he runs right with them. I know he I think he's a little wider right up the upper part of his pin than the blue sheep that I'm going in third spot. I think he's a really good clean kind of a built one. Our blue sheep that goes in third viewer from first to third all the way through here. He's the best when he comes right directly at me. That one is really cracked open. Got a great big forearm working into him. He's extra stout through his rib cage. I probably just, if I could just change him right out through his tail just a little bit and give him a little more dimensional shape as he work out through there, maybe through the lower part of his twist. But that's tough. That's a little thing on a really good sheep. Uh, and I like him a whole bunch as we got out here. Fourth comes in here as a really good design, good built one as we watch him out here. Good on his feet and legs. He's up and out. Gets out hustle just a little bit of some top shape. And same goes with our fourth, fifth place one out here. Another one that's up out, got a, kind of a neat kind of look. Get behind him, we start giving up just a little more power in place to these ones that are right directly above him. But uh, really good set. Let's give all these young people again a real nice round of applause. Congratulations. Folks, I want to introduce our exhibitors in our grand drive and our market goat show. Our Division I champion was Reagan Miller, age 11, from Seagraves, Texas, member of Denver City FFA. Reagan plans on going to Texas Tech, enjoys showing goats and lambs. Our Division II champion was Blaze Mock. Goat's name is Clubber Lane, uh, age 14, from Stephenville, Texas, member of Erath County 4-H. Enjoys showing, hunting, and fishing. Future plans are to keep working with their family business and attend college and judge livestock. Our Division Three champion was Briscoe Black, age 11, from Zephyr, Texas, member of Brown County 4-H. Enjoys judging livestock, showing livestock, and playing six-man football. Plans on attending Texas A&M. Our Division I reserve champion was Lucas Winter of Gorman, Texas, member of Gorman FFA. Enjoys playing baseball and showing livestock. Plans on attending TCU to study zoology and play baseball. Our Division II champion, we got a little out of order, was Tana Winberg, age 15, from Deer Park. Member of Deer Park FFA. Plans, uh, enjoys showing goats and talking to anyone who will listen. Uh, plans on attending, attending Blinn College and then Texas A&M. Our Division Three Reserve Champion was Madden Wise, age 17, from Brownwood, Texas, member of Brown County 4-H. Enjoys working at the barn with siblings. Plans on going to Tech or OSU and study ag business. Folks, we've got a great set of goats, an awesome set of kids. Let's give them a big round of applause. Well, it's certainly just been a lot of fun out here to sort through these goats and an honor to be able to come and do this. Uh, just as we've worked through the day, uh, the, the quality has been tremendous and the young people have been great to work with. And so, uh, again, I just really appreciate the opportunity to do this. Uh, but first and foremost, it is about uh, these particular kids right here. And uh, it is hard at a Texas major to make it out here and to be able to get out to the champion drive. It's one thing to get out of your class. It's another to get out of division. So please, one more time, put your hands together very loudly and uh, just congratulate these six young exhibitors. Very, very challenging to get out here. Uh, 
like I said, it's just an honor and very humbling to be able to be out here. Uh, and this is, uh, I've been blessed to ju judge some uh, pretty big shows at a young age, but my first Texas major, and there's nothing like it. Uh, it'll always uh, be a great memory for me, and uh, just really look up to the people that run this stock show, Glenn Allen and Jeff and L uh, Lauren. I just really appreciate the invite to do uh, do this and get the uh, their faith in this to for me to come and sort through the livestock. It's very humbling for me to be able to come out and do this. I'd be remiss without saying some thank yous uh, on my support system. And uh, my, my wife has taken care of the kids today, and we're going to have a weekend. Uh, and her, she supports me all the time and greatly appreciate her as I travel. She's always at home in the lambing barn and taking care of things at the home front. My parents came down and spent two months this winter snowboarding from Wyoming down here. And, uh, you know, uh, they, they you know, my dad helped uh, build a new part of the barn and make it to where chores were easy. And so when I'm on the road, it makes it easy to chore. And so I greatly appreciate my support system. And young people, I hope that's one of the biggest things you take away from this. It's one of the only things in life that you can do that your family and your closest supporters will be there. And as you go through life, having a good support system and people close to you and friends and family are going to be the most important thing that you can do as far as having those through you, uh, by you, through your ups and downs. And so, you know, if you go to a football game, uh, anything like that, even a livestock judging competition, the first people that uh, you go and hug is your coaches and your teammates. First people that these people go out and hug right out here is mom and dad, brother and sister, and working together in the barn together, and that's what makes this very, very special. And so young people, don't take that for granted. You make sure and say thank you uh, to your parents and uh, extension agents, FFA instructors, breeders, feeders, fitters, whoever it is behind you. It sure takes a lot of time, effort, and money to get these things drug up and down the road these days, and especially to be presented out here to this caliber right here. And so uh, just don't ever forget that young people always say thank you to those that uh, are in your corner and support you through the ups and downs. Uh uh, been an honor and a pleasure to be able to sort opposite uh, Al Schminke over there, one of the best stockmen in the country across multiple species, and uh, uh, just, uh, again, makes it that much more humbling to know that uh, I get to sort opposite of a stockman like that, and so I enjoyed listening to him, and uh, might sneak over and catch the end of the Blackface Sheep Show as he's working over there, but all I've got to say is thank you one more time to Rodeo Austin for having me. Uh, I've talked these goats ex uh, in depth and detail in class uh, each and every time. Uh, and so I'm not going to overly talk about them. Uh, I talk about them making them memorable. These six will always stick in my mind. Uh, these six will be memorable. These goats are unique to get out here into this drive and be memorable. Uh, and at this point, then it's just kind of personal preference on which one just hits me the hardest and just the most unique and most antagonistic traits together. I'll show you the pair that do that out here of a set of six really good ones, two ultra special ones to me. But again, it's about these six kids out here Put your hands together one more time. Congratulate them. <laughs> Young man with their heavyweight, he's our champion. Our grand champion goat goes to Briscoe Black, Brown County 4-H. And reserve grand goes to Madden Wise, Brown County 4-H. Congratulations to these exhibitors. Pleased to have Mr. Dolphin Jackson with us here today, our Rodeo Austin president, here to present the banner and buckle to our exhibitors. Class 15 medium wolves should be checking in.
class. 13 many and more results. 10th place, Barrett Collins, Hayes County 4-H. 9th, Allison Throckmorton, Bandera County 4-H. 8th, Braxton Holscher, Highland FFA. Breeder is Brister Club Lambs. 7th, Alyssa Flores, Zapata FFA. 6th, Brooke Warren, Sunray FFA. 5th, Olivia Sandy, Erath County 4-H. 4th, Chandler Kirksey, Bell County 4-H. 3rd, Michaela Swerk, Swerk, Parmer County 4-H. 2nd, Tanner Hawes, Falls City FFA. Breeder is Diamond C Club Lambs. And our class winner was Kaylee Dunn, Randall County 4-H. Congratulations to these exhibitors.
give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring. Again, your class 15 medium wool should be checking in.
Just a reminder, painting, powder, changing color is not allowed at this show.
we found a Holt Farm cap and a cell phone in the bleachers. So if those belong to you, you can come retrieve them at the announcer stand.
as you leave the barn this evening. Please help us and be efficient as possible loading out. We do have vehicles backing up, so if you can help us as load out as quickly and efficiently as possible, we appreciate it. Let's give all these young people out here a real nice round of applause. This is an incredible, incredible class as we get out here. Well, shoot this way, guys. Uh, this, uh, this is, these are the kind of classes, again, that we talk about at Texas Majors. Uh, and again, uh, the, the quality is incredible. Uh, any one of these five, another judge, another day could, could line them up a little bit differently. This is the way I, I see them as we get out here. And again, uh, all five of these things are really, really good. And there's, there's ones behind me, folks, that are uh, they came to win. I think it's just one of those ones we're getting in kind of the meat of the classes of the weights that the, I know that a lot of the exhibitors want to kind of be hanging out in these, in these particular classes because this, uh, this is the classes we've got to kind of get one to get into that next level and stuff. And I think it's close. Uh, I like the one I'm leading off with. Again, I'm always kind of a first impression guy. And this particular one, when he hit the ring, uh, was one that uh, I couldn't hardly get my eyes off him as he was working the ring. This sheep stays together so well. When you get him in his skeletal build, just in motion, uh, is incredible. He's got a great big forearm. Uh, he opens up extremely good through his chest plate. You can see he sets down on really good rigging as you got him going across here. And then he has a big back. And when you get right around and, and you got to center around that guy's fore rib and the, through the rib cage, he opens up incredibly. He balances out through his hip and his rump. He's level out through his tail, his dock. Got a tremendous amount of shape when we get right out through that hip, the rump design. I think a really neat one to kind of lead off with. The one following him is right on his tail. I think uh, another one that's got huge top shape working into him. I think uh, for me, he probably isn't just quite as stout featured uh, as the one I'm leading off with. That's a little thing, okay? Uh, that would never get called uh, until you have one maybe just a nickel stouter. He is probably just a nickel cleaner in his chest plate, but I don't know if he's any wider down low. And so that's kind of the differences between these two. And again, I like both of them a bunch. I think they're just subtle little differences there as we kind of work those two on the top end. This third one, again, one that's got a tremendous amount of top shape, really good in his muscle shape outside. He really cracks open really good. He's clean. He doesn't have much chest plate. Ties together, I think, really, really well. Same with our fourth and our fifth that we come out here. Fourth, I think, is just a little better looking when we get off to the side. Still really good design. Really nice power sheep that sits there in the fifth spot, sitting back here. Tie him just a little bit in his hip loin compared to our other ones out here. But I think those are close. So these are all five uh, champion caliber type sheep in here, and I've got some laying behind me that I think are extremely good. Let's give all this class again a real nice round of applause. Congratulations, guys.
class 16 medium wools from check in. Class 14, medium wool results. 10th place, Avery Cordes, Leon County 4-H. Breeder is Sharpton Club Lambs. 9th, Kylie Land, Brown County 4-H. Breeder is Glasscock Club Lambs. 8th, Amanda Alderson, Hayes County 4-H. 7th, Wade Hedfelt, Callahan FFA. Sixth, Journey Mathis, Willis FFA. Fifth, Kaylee Wingate, Barber Hills FFA. Fourth, Dawson Lott, Louise FFA. Third, Luke Krippendorf, Comal County 4-H. Second, Madden Wise, Brown County 4-H. And our class winner was Kaysen Newell, Falls County 4-H. Breeder was Glasscock Club Lambs.
Give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring, please. Case and Newell, can we can we get you and your lamb to come back up here to the show ring, please? Case and Newell.
again, your class 16 medium wolves will be checking in. Again, we do have this cap, Holtz Farms cap and cell phones that were found in the stands up here at the announcer stand. Entry 8331, need you at check-in, 8331.
Another really incredible set of, of medium oils. And again, uh, I think quality is extremely strong all the way through. And I think we kept 15, 16, maybe even 20. I don't know. Uh, I think that's kind of where the natural break was, in my opinion. And, and then you get to the top end of these. And uh, uh, again, I think quality is extremely good. Uh, the one I'm going to lead off with, and again, I think he brings a little bit of the uh, probably it's a little more of the unique things, that I guess, are probably what we're looking for. I think one that kind of assembles an incredible skeleton, uh, feet and legs. When you get around the front side of him, he is really good out through his blade and right through his chest floor and up through his front part of his body. And then he's level and, and just dead center going across the ring. He doesn't deviate down his top line. He's got tremendous amount of shape and muscle still working into him. He's still one that's up and out and got a neat kind of a look. For me, I think he's just a really nice place to get started in a really tough class. I think he just totals up, I think, extremely well. A little more give and take, probably between second and fifth out here. The second place one, for me, is the one that falls the next in line. I think from the standpoint of one that's a little more up and out, uh, still got a tremendous amount of shape on the top side of his body, and I think he has the second most when we start talking about shape up on top. Uh, maybe crack him open just a nickel more when we get down low and maybe just a shot more muscle behind to get around that top one up here. But he is good looking, good build. He's got a really great profile to him. I like those things, I think, really, really well about him. The one that comes in my third spot, another one there, has got a really neat kind of a look. He may be as actually wide-based uh, down low as any of them that we've got in here. He does have a little more outer blade to his to his skeleton as you watch him out here and you get around the front side of him. But that does allow him to have the extra center body, the extra shape and muscle. Young lady does a terrific job with him. He's got a really a good look as we get into him uh, and really, really good design. May just change his shoulder sculpture just a little bit. One and fourth, again, uh, as good a top and rack and loin and shape and still good touch and feel as this one's got. Like that one a bunch out there. For me, it gets a little shorter rump and maybe just a little bit rounder in its hip and rump in relation to those top four, but in itself is a very, very good individual. And the one we're finishing up here in the fifth spot, uh, another one that's really up front, a good look, got a great design kind of working it, probably not quite as opened up as for some of these that we've got down here on the other end, probably just a, got a little more condition kind of working on him also in relationship to those other four. But this is pretty close. Those are little nitpicking things as we get into these high quality classes. These are the kind we like to work. So give all these kids, again, a real nice round of applause. Great class. Congratulations. Class 15 results. 10th, Riley Stinicky, Wimberley FFA. 9th, Hazen Hoffman, Glasscock County 4-H. Breeder is Neff Livestock. 8th, Heston Holdenberger, Blanco County 4-H. 7th, Mason Lee, Midland County 4-H. 6th, London Watson, Blooming Grove FFA. Fifth, Jordan Rocheski, Dawson County 4-H. Fourth, Holden Wise, Brown County 4-H. Third, Brindley Hogg, Lubbock County 4-H. Second, went to Sydney Hanslick, Clyde FFA. And our class winner was Carson Noisy, Comal County 4-H. Congratulations.
class 17 medium walls can check in. We do have a Visa debit card that was turned in. So if you're missing your debit card, you can come give me your name and claim it, possibly.
We are waiting on some goats at the truck. Uh, Derry, let's see, William Derry, Dalton Baldridge, Jaden Sands, Alyssa Molina, Tavia Talley, Taylor Sansom, Kaylee Hoyt, and Paisley Morris. You all have goats that need to go to the truck. Please take them that way. Carson Saul. If Carson Saul is in the show barn, please come to the announcer stand. Give these lamb exhibitors a hand as they exit the ring.
This is class 16 that is showing the random on the lamb side. The random test will be the fourth place out of this class. So class 16, fourth place animal will need a parent to go to the testing area. Class 17 medium bulls can check in.
another really good class out here. And again, uh, the guy's uh, getting full money's worth for us for it out here. Uh, this top five.